I think one minute is over, right? All right, cool. Okay. Does that work? Yeah. All right, perfect. All right. Um, first of all, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to come here. Uh, it is already rather late, right? Four o'clock in the in the afternoon. So um, I guess uh, that is not mandatory. Um, so I'm happy that uh, we have a couple of people here. And um, well, uh, let me start with uh, a quick introduction to uh, the program, to the workshop, uh, and to us, the presenters. Um, you have the uh, questionable uh, opportunity to be the first one to enjoy this workshop. That has a, a, a positive side and it has a negative side. The positive side is that you are the first one who uh, will see the workshop. And um, the negative side might be that um, some parts of the workshop um, can be still improved. And um, at least you learn how maybe not to do some presentations. So I think in, in the end, it's always a win-win situation. The uh, idea when the, when the workshop was created was um, that we get um, different people uh, from different fields um, on kind of the same level to talk about the internet. Um, and uh, I will go into details about that uh, a bit later. So um, the uh, design goal of the workshop is uh, uh, divided into two parts. We have a first part, uh, which will uh, introduce the internet, the concept of the internet to uh, hopefully everyone. And I apologize for the uh, technical audience. Um, that might be a little bit boring for you, but uh, bear with me. We have a second part. And in the second part, we are going to talk about uh, data science uh, in combination with uh, internet uh, data. And uh, this part of the workshop uh, is something that has been taught already many times and quite successful. So um, I'm also looking forward to the second part. Before we're going to continue, I would like to uh, know more about uh, the audience uh, itself. Um, but before I let uh, my colleague uh, Vahan introduce himself. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, thank you. Uh, and second word is Rogorakar, right? <laughs> well, I, I, I do hope to know more Arab Georgian words in future because I, I will travel to Georgia so much and I will, I'm already traveling here. So I'm the uh, external relations officer uh, responsible for Caucasus and Central Asia areas, regions. And this opportunity we have created as a follow-up of our MOU with the GNCC, Georgia National Communications Commission, uh, that is also stipulating us uh, to make the academic engagement initiatives here in Georgia. Uh, our partners has kindly uh, agreed to also join us, Ucha Sechori, Lada Svanadze, and Roman. Roman. Yeah, here. And they will also show us the experience, local experience from Georgia, how, uh, how it is going on here and what initiatives we have here, and they, what, what are they doing to develop the industry, Georgian industry here. Uh, thank you much to Giga. Giga is an old partner and old friend of us uh, we're working with uh, from GITI, still from 2008, I guess. Uh, Christian, Christian, one of the brightest minds in Europe and CC, and he has traveling all over the region, Middle East, Europe, uh, Central Asia, Caucasus, etc. I do hope we'll see him uh, in future also in Georgia. So, not more to say. We'll start the presentation, we'll start the, uh, this seminar, and I just ask you to be active and uh, have the proactive attitude, ask questions and get engaged uh, with our activities in future. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, Rohan. We have presents for uh, prizes for the best uh, questions. Uh, we still need to work out who will be the judges for that, but yeah, we'll see when the first questions will. You're going to do it? <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Anna. Okay. Um, no, no, I'm going to take you serious on that. Um, so, uh, just uh, uh, to quickly uh, tell you what I've been doing for um, all my life now. Um, so, in the beginning, I studied computer science uh, in Austria, and uh, after I did that, um, I started to work at the Ripen CC. I started in information uh, services, uh, which was mainly about giving information out to our members. Then after one year, I uh, moved to research and development, and, and there I'm uh, responsible for uh, RIPESTAT. Um, I will come in the slides to this uh, information service. Uh, I also participate in RIPE Atlas and in many other of the uh, projects that we do at the RIPE NCC. And uh, yeah, I have the pleasure to travel a lot uh, for uh, external relationships. And um, yeah, we do many of these workshops uh, for different audiences. Uh, and as I said, this is the first one for a wider audience. And I'm looking forward to get your feedback uh, later on. And uh, one thing uh, that uh, specifically uh, interested me, so uh, for the last two years, I was um, busy with uh, doing a second education. And um, I was doing an MBA in Big Data and Business Analytics at the Amsterdam Business School. And uh, that was a very uh, eye-opening uh, experience for me, especially for the business part and the financial part. Uh, the technical part, yeah, that was a bit uh, not too new to me, but uh, the other part. And I think there are many overlaps between these different fields. That brings me to the next one. Uh, how many of you have a technical background? So computer science or uh, mathematics? All right, then uh, I would say that's 34%. Uh, <laughs> um, what other fields do we have in the, in the uh, audience? Uh, do we have someone from uh, agriculture, from the agriculture university? Okay, okay, good. And uh, law, do we have law here? Oh, maybe it's easier if you're going to tell me what kind of field uh, you're in. Yes? And we have someone who can translate, so... It who is not covered? What, what else are you, you are studying? It might be also uh, Georgian, Russian, Armenian. Language. Vahan understands <laughs> everything. I can also translate. He's like the babel fish in. Uh, anyway. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Fantastic. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, other fields? Is the rest from design? Does the remaining part study design? You? Yeah. All right. Um, I, I, I would think that right now you're a bit shy. Uh, I hope that in the course of the workshop that will go away because we have two interactive sessions and I would really like you to uh, participate in that. And oh, thank you for the light, it's much nicer. Then uh, I think we have a, a quite a, a packed program, so um, I'm gonna continue uh, rather fast through the uh, first part and the second part, it really depends uh, what's the feedback from the audience, um, what we're going to uh, do. So we have these uh, three agenda points, introduction, I think we can uh, tick that off. Uh, first part is the introduction to the internet and the second part is data science. The first part is uh, divided into, uh, well, you can guess it, a brief history of the internet, uh, how TCP IP network works. Um, then the domain name system, then we have internet governance and the role of an RAR, and we are coming from an RAR, from a regional internet registry. And uh, we are talking about uh, IoT, a buzzword in the, from the last uh, three years. And then we're going to have this interactive session, and the interactive session is about the disruptive power of uh, the internet. And I would like to involve uh, your opinion in 
how the internet will be able to change or is already changing um, your field, ideally. And then, uh, if time allows, we're going to have an introduction to RACI and the RIPE Fellowship. Second part is about data science. I'm going to explain that when we're going to get there. Okay, first of all, we're going to start with the history of the internet. And um, the history of the internet is related with uh, some inventions. Um, and one of these inventions is, uh, of course, the first one is the electronic uh, telegraph that was invented in 1809. Uh, and then later on, we had the radio and we had the telephone. The uh, interesting thing with the telephone is, and with the uh, telegraph, is that they are line switched. So that means that um, you have a direct line from one device to the other device, right? And um, in the early days, they had these uh, call center switches, you know, where people were actively uh, reconnecting the phone line. And uh, that, of course, right now is all digital. But it's a milestone for the development of the uh, internet, um, which uh, basically happened about uh, 1969. And uh, in between, uh, there was just the improvement of existing technology. Radio, by the way, uh, I find also very interesting technology because it's the first time that information got uh, transmitted without a wire, right? So it was wireless. Then, um, I'm not going uh, too much into details about the history because you can uh, find plenty of uh, YouTube videos about the history of the internet that can explain it much better than I do. Um, but I just want to highlight some uh, corner points. And yesterday when, we, uh, uh, when I had the uh, pleasure to work with this device for the first time, I discovered that I can interactively uh, work with that. So. I mean, I will restrain uh, my enthusiasm about that, but um, here basically it starts, uh, 1969. Um, I guess you know that the, the uh, internet, so the first version of the internet, was, which was called uh, ARPANET, which is Advanced Research uh, Project something else, uh, but it uh, grew out of a military project. Um, and uh, that idea that it was used for military was also uh, one of the uh, founding elements why the internet became that successful. And uh, there are two very important things. Uh, first of all, that it's decentralized. Um, so there was not one central system and uh, the idea behind that was, well, it was uh, during the uh, Cuba crisis that uh, uh, atomic strike onto the US uh, would have destroyed their infrastructure. So they came up with uh, this uh, idea to have it decentralized. So even if you're going to take out some nodes, uh, the entire syst system will still keep on working. And uh, later on, when we're going to talk about TCP IP networks, I'm going to explain um, what that means. And the other very important uh, invention uh, for the internet was that it's, uh, I said before that the telegraph and the phone they were line switched, so you had one dedicated line, uh, a cable, between one device and the other one. And the internet is uh, packet uh, switched, um, which was at that time a, a huge invention. And on later slides, I'm going to explain uh, what that means. And then, I think you know it uh, um, much better, um, what other services uh, came to into existence. Uh, for me, it's always surprising that um, Google, for example, uh, was uh, just invented uh, not even uh, 20 years ago, right? And uh, I think how much we rely already on these technologies. Uh, and Facebook was invented in, well, um, was created in 2005. And I guess every one of you has a Facebook account or something uh, similar. All right. Uh, if we're going to talk about the uh, history of the internet, and that I think should show the, the uh, wide uh, range of um, uh, att attributes the internet uh, changed, uh, we're going to have a technology uh, change, which we will talk a bit more about that. 
But uh, there is also a big challenge about how to operate uh, these million of uh, devices. So that is an interesting aspect, uh, the uh, change of the society, and I hope we're going to talk about that in the inter interactive session. And then, of course, the commercial aspect, because without the commercial aspect, the internet would not be there where it is right now. So 30 years ago, I think the internet was mainly used by a couple of nerds uh, in their labs. Um, and we had bandwidth uh, speeds of around uh, 56 uh, kilobits uh, per second, which is definitely not enough to watch uh, anything in HD quality. Uh, so by having this commercial aspect of the internet, um, the internet infrastructure grew to uh, what we know right now. Uh, that's also uh, reflected by the number of uh, internet users, uh, and that growth is uh, um, uh, well very uh, extraordinary. At the moment, we have uh, 3.5 uh, billion uh, internet users. And given that we have a world population of 7.6 billion, then uh, we are talking about uh, roughly 50% of all the uh, people on the planet have uh, internet uh, in a way, which of course um, creates some problems with the operation and the management of that, but we're going to get to that a bit later. Let's talk about uh, the technical aspect, how a TCP IP network works. So TCP IP is the fundamental of the internet. And I have to apologize, that gets a little bit technical, but um, I think it is necessary um, to understand the internet. So first of all, the internet is a network of uh, other networks. So there is not one big network, so it is a network of uh, smaller networks. And TCP IP is basically the standard communication that enabled uh, that all of these networks can talk with each other. Um, to highlight um, the operation of the internet, I tried to draw a little bit and, um, well, sort of successful. What is important that every device that is taking part on the internet, it could be your mobile device, uh, it could be uh, my laptop, it could be an IoT device, they need to have a unique number. Without this unique number, they can't communicate. So let's add these unique numbers and uh, let's see how this, uh, how this works. So uh, let's uh, think about a simple transmission. So uh, we want to send data from the node one to node three. And what's important is that um, node one and um, I think that is the important thing about uh, package switched. That means you don't have to, uh, right now I can draw, perfect. So you don't have to have a, a direct line between uh, these uh, nodes because the data is being fragmented and then sent into packages uh, to this machine. But what is uh, important is uh, that you need to know the direction because every node on the internet is sort of equal because they are used to transmit the data, right? So if you want to send data from node one to node three, then it, uh, every part of this network, so every node needs to know where to send the data. And um, yeah, to make it a bit more interesting, I thought about uh, number one wants to watch uh, something on Netflix, which is uh, hosted on node number three, and um, for that, it, uh, number one needs to know where number three is. And this is basically what's um, the phone book of the internet. Uh, well, in technical terms, it's called routing table, and this is right now simplified. What you're going to see there is um, that node one needs to know its direct neighbors. So, uh, for example, uh, we have the information in there that node number two is on the right side of node number one. And then where all the other nodes are, right? So for example, we want to send data to uh, node number three. That means that node number one needs to know two, five, and four. So that would be these nodes. So every data that you're going to send out in these packages um, will look up this information on the routing table and then it will know where to send the data. And then from a transmission point of view, it basically means this way. And then, of course, the data also needs to go back, but it's the same uh, story in a way. So 
basically the routing table needs to be replicated here, 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 and here. The interesting fact is uh, that this phone book of the internet, um, there is not one unique one, right? So every node can have a different one because their view on the internet is a different one. And in the second part, we uh, go a bit deeper uh, into this uh, data. Let me just ask, uh, is this so, way, uh, so far clear? Or are there any questions? Because I would really appreciate if um, you're going to ask me what's not um, understandable. Um, because as I said, this is the, uh, one of the first times that uh, I'm going to present to a less technical audience. Shall we continue? OK. All right. Then this is also a bit more uh, technical. Um, these numbers that I gave to the uh, nodes, uh, that's of course not the way it's being used on the real internet. On the real internet, we're going to use uh, IP addresses. Uh, and these IP addresses, they have different formats. So the first uh, format that we're going to talk about is IPv4. This is the internet protocol since uh, the time when the internet became uh, widely used. And then a little bit later, we, well, a little bit later, it's already quite old, it's uh, 18, 19 years old, um, we have another protocol, which is IPv6. Um, and I think I'm going to give out uh, one of these uh, goodies uh, for the person that can tell me why we had to switch, um, had to switch. I mean, I'm already giving it away. Um, why there are two different protocols? All right, okay. Um, just for everyone to catch up, um, IPv4 has 32 bits and IPv6 has 128 bits. And that length decides how many numbers you can generate, right? And um, I let you right now uh, tell me why we have IPv6. Yeah, yeah, we are, we are running out of uh, numbers. Okay, um, that was an easy question, okay? Um, that means uh, you're going to get a USB stick. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Um, good. Um, so for everyone to, um, uh, well, this would be how IP addresses look in reality. So we have one IPv4 address here and the IPv6 address there. Um, but uh, what I wanted to uh, show is that um, with IPv4, we have an addressable space of um, uh, 4.3 uh, billion uh, addresses. And what I said in the beginning, all of these numbers need to be un unique, right? Remember how many people we have on the internet. Uh, it's around 3.5 uh, billion, right? So you see the problem, all right? If everyone, I mean, how many internet devices do you have? You have one laptop at home, you have, uh, you have an a iPhone, you have maybe, what else has internet? Yeah, a lot of other things. Come again? Gadgets, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you're going to take the number of internet users, then you need to multiply it with the average amount of uh, internet devices that they have. And then you clearly see that we are running out of uh, unique numbers. Um, that is not so far a problem because there is a, a technology invented to, uh, to help that, bridge that. But um, uh, that basically means that we are using the same IP address uh, for multiple people. Uh, and in short, that has um, a lot of problems. One of the problems is that it's getting very complex um, because you have another layer. And the other uh, issue is that um, the end-to-end -end connectivity that the internet is famous for, so you're communicating from one unique IP address to another one, is not there anymore. And uh, I can tell you uh, what's the implication on that. Um, it is, uh, especially for uh, the police, it's, uh, it's a problem. So for the legal enforcement agencies. Uh, because, uh, you know, many countries have this uh, legislation that if you surf on the internet, then your internet service provider needs to keep a log of what you're doing on the internet. And, um, I mean, I hope that you're not anonymous on the internet. That's, uh, that's definitely not true. Um, 
And if you're going to have this technology, which is called NET, uh, Network Address Transla Translation, then it's very difficult to prove that you were at a certain moment connected to a specific web page or something like that. So that's why um, we have a lot of interest from uh, the police, from legal enforcement, from Europol, um, so that we can solve this situation uh, in a way. But anyway, I'm drifting off. Um, so with IPv6, you can uh, address uh, many more IP addresses, and uh, that is very good. So there is basically no IPv6 uh, presentation or no mentioning of IPv6 without this graph. Um, this graph is from Google, and this shows how many people are using uh, IPv6 from um, their network. And uh, that's over time. And, um, well, you see right now in 2018, we have, um, well, very uh, optimistically, we have 22% of uh, internet users using IPv6, um, which is, if this number is not 100, we will not be able to switch off IPv4, and that means that these problems keep on going and going, uh, which um, the internet community right now is uh, very concerned with. So this is one of the uh, focus points that we are working on right now, to get the internet into uh, IPv6 in a way. So then uh, another uh, term that I want to introduce uh, in relation to TCP IP networks, and uh, that is uh, uh, autonomous system, which is uh, abbreviated with AS, and then you're going to have a number there. Um, and I said in the beginning that the internet is just a connection of uh, smaller networks, um, and they appear on the internet as these uh, autonomous systems. So. Um, this would be one autonomous system, this would be an uh, autonomous system, and you could think of uh, these autonomous systems as uh, something like the university uh, network. So um, to the outside, to the internet, there is only one university network, and within this university network, you have all the smaller devices, like all the laptops that are within the university, all the mobile phones that are connected to Wi-Fi, and to the outside, it's only one AS. That simplifies the operations of the internet, has also benefits uh, related to security or something like that, because within the network, you are allowed to do more stuff than uh, you're allowed to the, to the outside on the internet. And yeah, I just used the picture and I added uh, the ASNs. And here, for example, we have the ASN of uh, Netflix. And then we have uh, some intermediate uh, networks, and some of these networks, some of these ASNs, are purely uh, for transmitting data from one point to the other. We call them transit uh, networks. And since we're already starting with some uh, expert lingo, um, the people that are within this network, so basically the university, these are the people that are looking at content, for example, Netflix or, for example, Google, they are called access networks. So when you're sitting at home, you're uh, an access user of the internet because you're consuming, right? And then on the other side, we have um, content networks, for example, Google, uh, Uber, Airbnb. So everyone who is contributing data to the, uh, to the internet, and they are uh, called content providers. Then um, I thought about marking uh, slides that are highly technical with uh, T plus. So at this point, for everyone who is not too technical, if you're going to zone out or you know uh, check your Facebook messages, then you can do that. For the more technical uh, people, I want to explain the uh, TCP IP uh, stack. On all of these machines, um, it looks like that they are directly connected, and they are directly connected, but all the data that's flowing uh, from one machine to another machine has to go through a certain stack. And this stack is called uh, the IP stack. And uh, what we're going to see there is, for example, the lowest level, this one, is the link layer. On this level, uh, it's purely about physical, physical connection, right? And uh, the layer above is the internet layer. So this is how the uh, packages are routed from one node to another one. And then we have the transport layer which uh, guarantees uh, certain availabilities for the quality of the connection. And then we have the application layer, and then on top we have the application 
data. If you are a standard uh, internet user, I think you're only getting contact with this one. So you're going to use your browser, you're going to use your uh, mobile apps or something like that. And you are not concerned, and that's a good thing, with the lower levels. Because the lower layers, and that's, uh, I think, uh, a very engineering approach, um, which made the internet such a success. Because you can imagine, um, with so many millions of networks, computers that are connected with each other, if you're going to come up with one standard that has to be implemented, being implemented on all these computers, it would not work. I mean, because complexity is uh, basically uh, uh, a very bad thing for engineers. And uh, we have seen that with many uh, inventions, that if they are too complex, that they will not work. So instead, the internet made a different approach, and it tried to uh, separate certain um, problems, right? So as I said before, on this layer, you just, you're just concerned about the physical, physical connection. So that could be a copper cable, that could be a, a coax cable, like you watch uh, TV, um, or that could be a fiber connection, that could be a connection via satellite, it does not matter. Everything that's uh, based on the physical medium is uh, concerned in this layer. So the, the person that has to develop the layer above, I mean, can just uh, uh, assume that it will work, right? And I think that made it also very um, powerful, because as I understand, uh, at this university, software engineering is a, is a huge uh, part of the uh, computer science curriculum. That allows you to write uh, internet applications very easily, because you don't have to be concerned about the uh, other layers. All right, I just have to check how we are with time. Yeah, usually I talk too much. So what's important is that um, the stack has to be traversed from the uh, node that's sending from top to bottom, and then for the receiving end from bottom to top. Two different uh, data uh, implementations on the transport layer. First of all, we have TCP, which stands for Transfer Control Protocol, and then we have UDP, Universal Data Protocol. And the difference between those two, I mean, really simplified is that TCP uh, guarantees uh, the transmission of the data. So it's uh, connection oriented. So that means that if you're going to surf on your website, so basically if you're going to uh, call up a website, then TCP uh, makes sure that the data are really arrives on your site, or otherwise it will give you an error message if you can't do it, right? That would also mean that the data is being resent versus UDP. UDP is something that's connectionless, and that means that you don't get the uh, confirmation that data has been received. Now you would ask, uh, why is that necessary? Uh, that depends on the application, because sometimes you have uh, applications that don't require these, um, this uh, guarantee of, um, of uh, uh, reception. Um, one example is uh, voice over IP, so Skype. If you're going to use Skype, that usually uses UDP, which is much faster than uh, TCP but with the obvious problem that uh, the voice or the, the picture could uh, be uh, very distorted. So the quality of the connection is a lower one, but it's faster. UDP is also used if you um, do online gaming for certain parts, if it uh, gets to uh, speed. Then, this is also a very uh, technical uh, slide. This is the uh, TCP three-way uh, handshake. So for every TCP connection that your browser uh, does to a web page, it needs to go through uh, these three steps. So first of all, the client needs to synchronize with the server, and then the server needs to reply, oh, you synchronized with me, and then the uh, client needs to say, like, oh, uh, I acknowledge that. So um, I received that you acknowledge that I synchronized with you. It sounds a bit complicated, and um, it is also, um, but when it was created, it was to make sure that the data is uh, with, a, with a connection so that you can have a guarantee on the data being sent because you want to see a web page fully loaded with all the data, right? And uh, that's um, the reason why it was invented. 
Um, because of this uh, bit complex uh, system, um, there are a couple of jokes, and um, I had to include that. And um, yeah, I'm not sure if uh, if you. Um, it's maybe not too easy to understand. So basically, the joke is about. Do you want to hear a joke about TCP/IP? Uh, then someone says, "Like yes, I'd like to hear a joke about TCP/IP." Are you ready to hear the joke about TCP/IP? I'm ready to hear the joke about TCP/IP. Here is a joke about TCP/IP. Did you receive the joke about TCP/IP? I have received the joke about TCP/IP. <laughs> All right, I, I, I get it. Um, it's very verbose, right? I mean, um, TCP is very verbose, and um, that that's a downside uh, on the internet because uh, web pages uh, is, is still a very old technology, and um, um, it's like email. I think it will never die. But um, there's an improved uh, uh, protocol already. Um, that's, for example, HTTP uh, v2, which uh, um, tries to cut down on these three-way handshake. Uh, because if you're going to load a web page, uh, it will load the text, it will load the uh, CSS, it will load all the images, and for all these connections, it has to do something like that. Then you can imagine that it is pretty slow. Um, of course, if you have a, a very fast connection, then it doesn't matter, but um, if you have a GPRS or something slower, then you will feel that. All right. Then another thing that we still need to cover, because it's very important, that's DNS, uh, so the domain name system. Can I ask who of you knows about DNS? I mean, the people in the front are <laughs> um, exempt from that. OK, then we're going to quickly go through that. The important thing about DNS is uh, that um, with these numbers that I showed you before, and especially the IPv6 numbers, nobody is going to remember that, right? But the internet works on these numbers. So what do you do? As an engineer, you're going to put another layer in there, and that layer does nothing else than translating numbers to names and vice versa. So if you're going to go to your browser and then you're going to type in www.netflix.com, then it's being translated, it's resolved uh, into our IP address. And um, well, since we have two protocols, it's being resolved either to IPv4 and IPv6 or only one of those. Um, so the DNS system is very important uh, to the internet because without the DNS system, I think there would only be two people in this room that wouldn't use the internet, right? Um, so it is a central part of the internet, and uh, this is for uh, the more technical people. It's decentralized and hierarchical. What that means is something that i show you soon. Here I just put the uh, domain names um, into the picture, and it would be something like that. So uh, you all know this one. And uh, even if you have a, a mobile device that's uh, used uh, from the university or something like that, they all have a um, host name in a way. Might not uh, mo be the most prettiest one, but usually they do. Then again, here we have a technical slide. Uh, the organization uh, of DNS is uh, being distributed. And it is hierarchical. So we have a root, and from this root, um, the, main the maintenance of uh, DNS is being separated uh, into smaller piece pieces, which are more specific. So um, the domain names that you're going to type in, they are, re they are read uh, reverse. And we're going to get to that uh, on the next slide, I guess. Yes. This is a, a sample uh, resolution. So you're sitting here and you're going to type in a domain name, then uh, I can show you what will happen. Um, first of all, the uh, laptop or your mobile phone has uh, a table, uh, a, a cache, where uh, it keeps the resolution of a name to a number. If you have been to that web page just half an hour ago, then it usually will take it from that local cache, which is called a stub resolver. If that's not the case, it will send um, the request, um, give me the number for www.yahoo.com to your DNS server in the system. So whenever you connect uh, to the Wi-Fi, then the system will exchange and will give you a DNS server that you can ask for this. 
things. That's usually all automated and that's being part and covered by the uh, IT team. But from this resolver, if nobody else in this university went to this web page a few minutes ago, then it will have to traverse the DNS system to find this information. And here's the interesting part, because it will start at the end. And this is about uh, what I said before with the, with the hierarchy, right? Um, so, um, Yahoo is here, so it will start first with com, then with yahoo.com, and then it will give you the uh, result IP address. So in the end, what you want to have from this DNS system is just the number, right? But it's very smartly uh, designed, because first of all, um, you do a request uh, to the root, and the root is being operated by a bunch of volunteers. The RIPNCC operates one of the root DNS servers, um, but that's definitely too much for this. Uh. And then the root will say like, oh, you're looking for a com domain. Then I'm going to give you the ad address, the IP address, for the server that's responsible for that one. So you're going to get the address back. Then this one will send a request to this IP address and will ask like, hey, do you know the IP address of yahoo.com? Uh, and then the com domain will say like, yeah, sure, I know that. Um, will send you that back, and then in the end, you will get an IP address for uh, www.yahoo.com. And the interesting thing is that the operator from this server doesn't really have to know what they are doing. So however they configure it um, is completely their business. And that makes, um, that makes it very interesting because the administration is shared. So um, you can have a lot of people working on these domains, and they don't all have to uh, communicate with each other, which makes it scalable, right? Because for everything that you need to resolve from a domain name to an IP address, you need to ask this system. So this system needs to be very uh, powerful. And um, at the RIP NCC, we have, um, I think it's around um, uh, 30 of these nodes, and these are really powerful uh, servers, and they get uh, millions of requests per second. And um, yeah, I mean, I think I should stop there because otherwise I'm go talking, going to talk too much and taking away uh, time from Vahan, who will give us the pleasure right now to so talk about internet government. Very complicated question. Uh, who runs and who controls the internet? I guess you have here a really good internet governance forum in Georgia. Uh, but what's your opinion? Who controls the internet? No. <laughs> I guess he does. Who yeah, can I say know. who is controlling the internet? Do you control the internet? No. Do you control the internet? No. Do you control the internet? Maybe Uche is controlling the internet? Uche is controlling, right. Lado, do you control the internet? No? Giga? No. 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 We all together control the internet. At least we have such a possibility. So uh, everybody controls the internet because it is very, very extremely complicated body, let's say. So many organizations, state organizations, uh, physical individuals even can control the internet. How? They can go to the government of internet to the governing the internet through different structures. Uh, you can take this slide after, the, after, but there are a lot of structures for each type of individual, for each type of government uh, and uh, governing body that allows them to go to make their recommendations, to make their decisions and control the internet. It calls multi-stakeholder approach. And here in Georgia, I guess you have this approach, and which I will tell, tell about that. But uh, in, in, in an international level, we also have this approach, and uh, many and many organizations are uh, made to allow you to control the internet, to participate in decision making, to make your, your notes, and to control, control it. So you can control the internet, and you can also control the internet. Everybody can, can control the internet. Because if you don't uh, make a policy, policy makes you. Well, uh, hmm? ah, yeah. uh, 
we have also uh, some type of I star organizations. You know, we know and we like each other in this international <laughs> community, and we call some of the organizations uh, something like the I stars, Internet stars. These organizations are created to share their responsibility for the co to coordinate the technical uh, maintenance of internet infrastructure. So what type of organizations there, uh, we can see here? It is regional internet registries, RIRs. It is one of the, these RIRs uh, is RIPNCC, and we'll go, we'll go further to uh, see what we do. It is number resource organizations, ICON itself, uh, IANA, maybe you have heard about IANA, uh, ASO address supporting organizations, ISOC, Internet Engineering Task Force, Internet Architecture Board, and World Wide Web Consortium. The RIR system, in the world we have five RIRs, that uh, regionally provide IPs and make the internet registry. Uh, in Europe and Asia, it is uh, RIPNCC. You can see APNIC, LACNIC, AFRINIC, ERIN in uh, different areas. And what we do, uh, we are uh, here. We are the non-for-profit non organization. We provide uh, the IP addresses to our members and we make the registry, we count it, we uh, do all these functions with, with the registry. Uh, number resource organization. It is co a coordinating body to coordinate RIRs. Um, we contribute each other and we, contri we, we, we work uh, with each other to make the internet better. That is the coordinating body itself. Icon is, who, is, who knows Icon? You know Icon, great. Nobody else? Great. Nobody else knows Icon. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're here. <laughs> great. It is also great because you, 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 have the, uh, uh, you have a room to know it. Yeah, so it, it is the Internet Corporation of Assigned Names and Numbers. So it is located in U.S. And it is actually the international organization responsible for the management and oversight of the coordination of internet domain name system and its unique identifiers such as IP addresses. Uh, so um, I can oversee the internet uh, through the uh, sign number uh, names authority, but uh, it is now goes to PTI also. So IANA itself. Uh, so IANA is actually one of the oldest internet authorities. Uh, it has been created from the in 1970s, and uh, today, uh, last year, I guess, yeah, last year it has been uh, the, the functions of IANA has been provided to ICON uh, affiliated body. It is the Public Technical Identifiers (PTI). ASO, <laughs> address name supporting, address supporting organization, ASO, uh, so it is also in the structure of ICON. It is one of the three ICON supporting organizations. Um, so they develop policies, make their recommendation of, on IP addresses, etc. ISOC, I guess you know ISOC. No? Ucha? They don't know ISOC. Just to take it into account, yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. So ISOC is uh, also a non-for-profit organization. It it has been founded in 1992, and it is developing programs and projects to have more open internet to make the governance of internet better, etc. Uh, it has a lot of programs also in Georgia, and uh, Georgia is one of the best cases for ISOC, I guess. Internet Engineering Task Force is for engineers mainly. So they participate in this uh, event, let's say, in this network, and they develop the standards also. They develop recommendations for future development of the internet. 
Internet Architecture Board, it is both IATF committee and an ISOC advisory board body. So they work together. And the last one is Worldwide Web Consortium. Uh, so it is the international community where member organizations, uh, full-time staff, and the public work together to develop web standards already. So what about uh, RIP and CC? We are located in Amsterdam. We have the uh, regional office for Middle East in Dubai. We have some staff in Moscow and in Armenia or in the region, it's me. We are around 17,000 members and um, actually it is non-for-profit and uh, RIPE members, uh, RIPE community can participate also as a multi-stakeholder model, can participate in developing RIPE policies. We have a special activity, RIPE, not RIPE NCC. It's a policy development process where everybody from RIPE community can participate and can uh, make the, their uh, things uh, louder, they can recommend issues, etc. What we do, we, do, we di distribute IPv4, 6, and ASNs. Uh, we implement training courses, we uh, have a RIPE database. We support RIPE community in many and many issues in developing the industry. And we have RIPE Atlas, RIPE Stat, and resource certification. Um, IoT. Yes. What do we have with IoT? How do we uh, affiliate so, it with that? Yes. Does it work? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> IoT, yeah. Hi, ah, it was so comfortable there. <laughs> So, um, IoT. First of all, before we're going to start with IoT, I want to say like IoT is not a new thing. It has been just termed or, uh, you know, phrased as a new thing. Uh, Internet of Things is um, just a lot of Internet devices out there. And uh, I think it also captures that um, the, the size uh, of Internet devices is getting smaller and smaller. Um, so smaller devices, more devices, I think this is going in the direction of IoT. But other than that, I think that uh, Internet of Things is not a, a new term. Um, like, for example, cloud, right? I mean, you know cloud? Cloud is just a lot of computers, or not my computer, right? But other than that, it's uh, from a technical point of view, it's not uh, a very um, huge uh, uh, change. All right. Um, and I, I was thinking about how do I uh, introduce uh, IoT or talk a bit more about IoT with you. And um, what I came up with uh, was uh, I'm going to present you a company um, that is in the field of making sensors. And uh, these sensors um, can be considered IoT. Um, first of all, they are small. Um, they don't use a lot of battery, um, and they produce data, and that's uh, the very important thing. And the company is called uh, Libellium. Um, you can also go to their uh, web page and um, find more information about that. Um, what I got from their um, marketing material is the list of um, possibilities that they're going to provide. And it's such a long list that I uh, need to read that, or at least I read only the headlines, right? And then uh, we can give some um, examples of that. And uh, it's not my fault. Um, it's the word smart is uh, appearing there uh, very often. So we have um, a smart uh, agriculture, which I think is somewhere around here. Then we have smart, uh, smart animal farming, uh, smart home automation, e-health, smart cities, smart environment, smart water, smart metering, security and emergencies, retail, logistics, uh, industrial control, smart agriculture, and so on and so on. And um, I, I want to just pick out some examples of that, um, how IoT uh, could be used. Um, related to smart city, um, so I live in Amsterdam, and um, 
actually I forgot to put a picture of uh, <laughs> the train station uh, in Amsterdam on it, but um, it's full with bicycles. There are so many bicycles that uh, I, I can't think that um, every person who ever visited Amsterdam just has one bicycle. And um, one application of Internet of Things is that um, you're going to find your bicycle, right? So you're going to attach uh, smart devices so that you find it in this uh, sea of, uh, of bicycles. Um, especially a lot of tourists. Who, who ever went to Amsterdam? Okay. All right. Okay. W when you will visit Amsterdam, then um, you will see what I uh, mean. Okay, then we also have uh, other applications, right? Um, um, we can have um, also an example in the Netherlands. Uh, you know that the Netherlands is below sea level. Um, here we are not below sea level, sea level, right? What is the altitude? Perfect. So uh, I, I was born in Austria and I grew up also at 500 meters. So, <laughs> so it's a good altitude to grow up. <laughs> Um, so, uh, in the Netherlands, water is a big problem, right? Uh, they have dikes and a lot of things. So, it's very important to measure the water levels. And uh, again, IoT can help there as well. Um, then, uh, related to uh, uh, forest fires, uh, especially in California, it makes sense to be able to distribute that many sensors, right? And uh, when we are talking about um, these small devices, then um, they are also very cheap. That's very important for um, Internet of Things. And uh, instead of um, distributing 10 sensors in a, in a forest, um, you just drop with a, with a plane, you just drop uh, 1,000 sensors uh, over a big area. And they can again uh, use each other as a node to transmit the data. But the important thing is that if there is a fire somewhere starting, you uh, catch it really early, right? And then you can easily fight against that. So there are a lot of uh, uh, smart um, uh, uh, solutions that uh, are related with IoT, and um, I guess uh, we will all see uh, a huge change in the future uh, about um, together with, uh, with IoT. Um, the downside, but I only see that right now as a downside, is um, it is small, uh, it doesn't use a lot of battery, uh, it is cheap. So what do you think is the downside of, uh, of that development? And this is, oops, I hope it still works. Um, this is, no, of course, that's, uh, that's uh, very strong. Um, this is a flashlight. Um, you can zoom with that, um, a lot of things. What do you think is the downside of that? That as well, yeah, but that's not the downside, right? I mean, um, you're right, that's kind of a downside, but that's a downside of the internet. That's why we need to move to IPv6, right? I mean, imagine um, uh, the car manufacturers, and it's funny because they right now become our members, right? Uh, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, they become our members because they want to administer their IP space because if you're going to have uh, 10,000 sensors in, in a car, then <laughs> you don't want to have one IP address for all of them, right? That's why you need IPv6. One more chance. Yeah. Ah, you already got a USB stick. You want to have everything here. No, it should be. Oh, yeah. Do we have remotely someone? Participation. <laughs> this is a discrimination. Ah, you mean that we need a microphone when we have yeah. someone? Okay. Sorry, we're gonna. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's uh, the dependence of the sensor on the environment. I mean, uh, the errors it uh, it may produce by uh, some kind of heat or uh, some other uh, environmental stuff. Yeah, it's it's getting close. It's uh, not what I was looking for. Um, if anyone did. Um, Hold on, I'm going to give you a sticker, okay? <laughs> 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 You're going to get it afterwards. Um, and you have a bonus of 20% uh, for the next question. Um, so the, the, uh, all right, I'm going to say it, okay? Um, unless someone wants to try? 
it's actually unfair. Uh, if someone from the next universities will watch that, then yeah. all right, no, we need to find different yeah, questions. Well. So the thing is, um, ladies, be so be more active. Ladies, yes, sure, yeah, question. yeah. So uh, when we're going to talk about the Internet of Things, uh, there are four things uh, coming to your mind, and I'm going to tell you three. And the fourth one is something that you should come up with. First of all, it is small. Then it doesn't use a lot of battery and is cheap. What is the fourth one? That, from an engineering point of view, yeah, just comes with it. Hmm? You know it, right? Hmm? Now you can't say it, right? <laughs> okay, good. And uh, do we have any remote participant to... Do we know how many people are uh, remotely participating? <laughs> no. No. All right. Um, I already mentioned it today. Okay, we'll make the questions short time. <laughs> Go ahead. Sure. All right. Uh, Internet of Things. Uh, when we're going to talk about the Internet of Things, then there are four attributes that you always need to mention when you only use the word IoT. First of all is it's small, it doesn't use a lot of energy, and it's cheap. And then there is a fourth one. Distance? Uh, distance um, in which sense? Is there a niche so I can translate it into Russian? Do you want it? Guys. I, I already, okay, I give you a hint. I already mentioned that when we were talking about the, the graph showing these internets and each internet is part of a smaller network. Why also? And that makes another problem of... Uh, uh, that is connecting. kind of true, that is kind of true. So um, when I was talking about TCP IP, um, a lot of these IoT networks, they don't even use TCP IP, but you know, they are in the end connected to the internet because they need to get the data to someone who uses it, right? Um, but uh, that's not necessarily it. It's, I think after I say it, it's very obvious. Um, so three criteria, small, right? Yep. Malinkish. Yeah. Uh, 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 low energy? Yeah, let's uh, translate Low that. energy, it is. Ochin malinki energy. Ochin. And cheap. The shoulder. And? Chitorte criteria. Fourth criteria for that? Yes. Yeah. And the fourth one? No, we had three, right? Yes, we had three. Yes. So the fourth one is? And fourth one is? Um, and this is, I think... Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. All right, good. <laughs> of course. You looked it up, right? Madloba, Madloba. Yeah, no, go ahead. Uh, integration? No. 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 Yeah. Look, I mean, this is something that I'm not telling you because we have this course right now, because this is something that um, you as a consumer need to know. Right now, I think. It's easy, right? Malinki? All right. Okay. Then I say it, okay. Okay, and I'll yeah. give it to you. So they're, they're cheap. I mean, hey, if you're going to... Uh, if you're gonna buy a, all right now I almost give it away. If you're gonna buy, um, if you need a new house door, right, a door for your house, and you buy uh, the cheapest one, bit plus, what was it? Yeah, okay. What is the downside of if the quality is not the best one because it's cheap? Thank you very much. That is. Um, that is actually a worth a <laughs> that's worth a flashlight. Fantastic. All right. Yeah. Here you are. <laughs> okay, good. All Safety right. issue. Good, perfect. Um, there will be another interactive session right after that, so it's just a warming up. Um, so 
um, this is another problem that the internet community is right now uh, concerned with. Because uh, you have on the one side uh, the producers of that thing, so they want to make it, um, of course, uh, as cheap as possible. Um, the, the users of this thing, they want to have it last for as long as possible, so it shouldn't almost use any energy. So they want to change it all every 10 years or something like that. And uh, yeah, sm the smaller the better, right? I mean, if we're going to come back to the example with the, with, the, uh, with the wildfire, I mean, if you're going to can distribute 1,000 with a helicopter and you, you know, don't drop a tank or something like that as a sensor, then this is a benefit. Um, for consumers, they want to have it cheap, right? I mean, this is the fundamentals of, um, of consumer behavior that uh, consumers tend to uh, go for price because they are not aware of the quality, right? Um, so if you're going to go to a shop and you buy a webcam, then uh, you go for the cheap one because you see that the resolution is the same, so why should you go for the expensive one, right? And this uh, uh, consumer awareness is also something that uh, we at the RIPE NCC want to, uh, together with other uh, organizations like the Internet Society, want to uh, enforce. Um, maybe you remember, or maybe not, um, last year there was a DDoS attack. Um, I think it was in the news, um, maybe in Georgia in the news. It was the Mirai uh, botnet. Have you heard about that? Okay, I think that made it into the news, right? Vlado will have a presentation about that, I guess, yeah? Okay, perfect. Then I don't go into details. So the thing was that um, because all these webcams had a default password and nobody ever changed that, um, hackers uh, targeted uh, uh, these IoT devices, home IoT devices, um, and used it to uh, create a, a distributed denial of service attack against uh, uh, DNS provider that we already uh, saw. And as I said before, without DNS, the internet is useless for most of us. Um, and that was the case. I mean, Facebook and Google was uh, for half a day not accessible on the first on the East Coast and then of, uh, on the West Coast. And you can imagine with so many, so many, million, so many millions of users, uh, every minute not being available is a lot of money, right? Um, and that's, you know, that's uh, hopefully changing uh, in the future. All right. So actually, right now, we are at one hour. And um, we would have still... We, we still have two points for the first block. Um, the first one is an interactive session where we would talk about the impacts of uh, the Internet on uh, daily life or something like that. And then uh, we're going to have an introduction to RACI, uh, which could be interesting for you if you want to participate in this environment. And then we would have the first block done. Um, so I leave it right now to you if we're going to go right now into a five to ten minutes break. We'll go to at, uh, half past five. We have still 15 minutes. Perfect. All right. Then, and then we still have enough time for the second block, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect. All right. Uh, over there. <laughs> confused. Um, uh, yeah, by the way, there is an interesting search engine for Internet of uh, Things devices that's called uh, Thinkful. If you're going to go there, uh, you can type in the, the, the kind of field and the location, and then you see the location of some of these sensors, which is very interesting. If you're going to type in radiation and then Germany, that's uh, also very interesting. Okay, that brings me um, to my last uh, part of the uh, presentation. And this is, um, uh, it should be a dialogue. And I would like to talk about um, how the internet changed our life. Because um, I think um, that's clear that the internet had a huge impact on our lives. Um, and that's not even that long ago that uh, we haven't had internet. I mean, I still, well, I mean, I remember when the internet was not internet, but it was still there. Um, but I think that um, at least uh, since uh, four years, uh, the internet definitely changed the way we, we search information, right? Or the way we're going to communicate. I mean, I, I think WhatsApp is, is that uh, also the latest trend in Georgia? Or 
Um, do you use other stuff like Snapchat or something like that? Is it WhatsApp or another service? Viber. Okay, yeah. Then, um, yeah, I mean, when you're going to go to a new city, then uh, definitely Google Maps is uh, something. Then uh, I think this is also a challenge for, uh, for the universities. Um, Coursera. Um, so when, when I um, first studied, I mean, there was basically uh, no online content. Uh, last, uh, so my second study, uh, I saw already the change uh, that many of these uh, um, university programs, they were um, w additionally with uh, online content. So we had, um, we had machine learning and I guess that's being recorded, but uh, <laughs> the class that we had was pretty terrible. Um, but what we what we found very useful is the uh, machine learning course on Coursera because it's in your pace, it's well defined, it's you know with a lot of graphs. If you're gonna compare that with uh, physical education in class, then it is very difficult. I mean, understandably difficult because the teacher can't provide 100% uh, on every level, right? On every uh, lesson. So if the teacher uh, prepares the lesson uh, well and then that will be recorded and then it's being reused for uh, other students uh, with an interactive session. That is, I think, the future of the of uh, education. Um, but I'm happy to talk about that. So then uh, we have Airbnb and um, yeah, then we have other stuff as well. <laughs> you know that, right? No. All right. I mean, it basically shows um, our age. <laughs> um, this is uh, Tinder. It's a dating app. Yeah. Anyway, it's. I think it's not popular here, right? So in Amsterdam, it's crazy. I, I mean, everyone at least was once on Tinder, in a way. Oh, you don't. Oh. Um, all right. Uh, do you remember the swiping right and swiping left? Yeah. You know where you see pictures of. And then you swipe right for OK, swipe left, not OK. And if both people swipe right, then there is a connection and you can communicate. It's not OK. <laughs> you like this person or you dislike this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. You it's don't it's very to, shallow. Yeah. Once you ha have uh, swiped it right, for example, like, yeah, mm -hmm. they say that you like them. That's it. And they can also like you. And then you will have a matchmaking. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, now, oh, seriously, uh, Tinder is. You have. Uh, All right. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Yeah. What social app is popular here in Georgia? Viber. No, I mean, I mean something like the Tinder. Which one? Here. Okay, guys. Who can, this could who be can a starting help. point for Not a very interesting girls, eh? discussion. It might be confusing for girls. Okay, guys, what is popular here? <laughs> huh? You know? We have a sticker. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. I think that was in Amsterdam also once the time, but you know uh, it is small changed. country, so 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 they know each other, so can they get? Yeah, they see each yeah. other. Why why they need this? Yeah. Tinder, Badu, Mamba, Famba, yeah. Tumba. <laughs> I mean, I I think it's actually a good thing that uh, something like Tinder is not popular here because uh, it's terrible. <laughs> um, okay, anyway, then let's start with the discussion. So. Um, is there something that you would like to um, to talk about? Um, you know, the internet and and how the internet changes things right now, or maybe in the future. I mean, I, I can give you a hint that together with IoT, we will have more and more data. Uh, together with uh, technology being faster and faster, and I think from this point of view, you don't need to de be technical to understand that um, that uh, artificial intelligence will in the long run, and I think that's not too long, will replace um, 
uh, human uh, uh, work, right? So um, the, um, the the less um, thinking a work requires, the earlier it will be replaced by machines. And uh, this is not a hypothesis or something like that. Um, we already see that happening, and uh, that will not stop. If we are not going to find a field um, that we want to talk about, I'm going to continue this thought till the end. So you can right now choose if you want to hear uh, that opinion, or if we want to talk about maybe ideally a field that you are uh, working in. I mean, I'm still interested um, what most of you are <laughs> studying. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have design, we have uh, some computer scientists, we have some uh, math students. What else do we have? Business, business students. students so. That's very interesting. Before uh, I'm going to go into business students, what other field do we have? Maybe completely surprised. What is that? Engineering. Engineering, yeah, that's technical. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's technical. Graphic design. design. We had design already, right? Yeah. Um, what else? Is there something that, you know, really... Policy lawyers? You mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Law, for example. I mean, all of these fields will be um, and have already been disrupted by, uh, by technology and internet. And uh, we have business. Uh, business is a very interesting one. Um, and they mentioned that, uh, yeah. for example, Airbnb is quite popular here. Mm -hmm. And what, what else applications, what other applications you can mention here? What applications you use in Georgia? Uh -huh. What, what, had, what had a huge impact on your life? Yeah. That was not usual, for example, three, four, five years ago. So it was not usual to use these applications to do uh, what? Booking committees also, or something like this. E tourism, yeah. Do you use any any taxi application? No. Uh, Taxify, no. Gigi, what else? So, okay. And what wh else? Such applications, banking applications. Right. You don't need now. In many cases, you don't need now to go to the bank to get even the loan. You can request it. Uh huh. Food delivery, right? Food del What what application for food delivery do you use? Manage. Food Panda. Food Panda. Manage. Yeah. Great. Okay. <laughs> okay. Super. <laughs> and you? Ucha. So you use Facebook? Yes, I'm quite active in Facebook uh, and uh, to look through all the statistics you can find uh, a little bit more than 75% of uh, Georgian population in the network is quite interesting. 75% oh, yeah. have what? Are in Facebook. On Facebook, yeah. yeah. Small businesses. Are they are these real people or are these fake identities? No, no, no. <laughs> no, seriously. That's I mean, this is something question. that uh, that uh, you need right. to ask, right? Uh, because these will be the challenges of the future. Um, all right. I think that uh, your life changed a lot through uh, through internet, but uh, maybe um, it takes a while to realize that. Wait, wait for the microphone. In a minute. Hello. We have talked about all the good stuff that internet provides, uh, but what about the bad things, the dark side of the internet, the black markets, the things, the illegal things that are more and more um, delivered to the people who can use them in the bad ways, yeah? Uh, doesn't that side of the internet needs to be regulated by someone or a government or something? And what is this side under the work uh, today? 
Which are you want to yes, take that? Yes, we, we have a presentation about this dark side also and possible dark side, but internet is something like a hammer. You can use it to build a house and you can use it to kill somebody. Or, or change the president in a country. Yeah. Yes, or <laughs> yeah. It is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, the internet has a bit of an influence on our life. And yeah, it is true. like a flower, for example. You can take this flower to give it to the beautiful lady, and you can take this flower to beat somebody. <laughs> and flowers are very popular, I see, in Georgia, right? Yeah. Exactly, roses, yeah, <laughs> great. Grown in the Netherlands, right? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Um, Okay. I, th I think we're gonna uh, move that uh, yeah because we need to go to discussion the lunch next. Uh, to that presentation uh -huh. because then it fits uh, better. Just uh, let me finish this thought. So, um, are you familiar with the concept of exponential growth? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, a lot of things in our life they change exponentially. Um, that means that uh, it starts by having a, s a small um, number of people using something and then more and more and more and then it becomes because viral and then, and then goes up, right? Um, there are a couple of commodities in our life that go through these phases. There are nine phases and don't ask me uh, exactly about the names of that. One of these commodities is food, um, at least in, in Europe. Um, and the last stage of this uh, development is that it's uh, for free. Um, but don't get that right now wrong. I mean, if you're going to go to a supermarket in, uh, in Europe, you still have to pay for, uh, for food. But uh, that's mainly to pay the salaries of the people that are putting it in there or the, the person that uh, drives the truck uh, or oversees the, the growing process. But uh, in Europe, one third of the food will be uh, uh, is disposed, so it's thrown away, right? You would not do that if that's valuable, right? If that has uh, a huge value. We don't do that with oil, right? We don't <laughs> ah, throw it away, it's so dark. Um, and what it looks like right now, um, we might, or very sure, we're going to go through a same process in two other uh, commodities that will fundamentally change our lives. The first one is energy. Um, I, I claim that energy uh, will be uh, for free at one moment. Um, and there's a reason for that. The reason is that, that um, you all know solar panels. Uh, solar panels you know, became popular around 10 years ago. And first of all, the technology will become better and better. So the efficiency of solar panels will increase. And they already have solar panels that they can put in a glass, so it's uh, see-through and, you know, we can basically plaster an uh, entire city with these solar panels. Um, there's a calculation that if you uh, cover uh, a certain percent of the desert with solar panels, then you have enough energy to cover all the needs in the world. So the thing is, right now we produce solar uh, panels and there is, uh, uh, I forgot the name of the person whose law that is, but you know, some law, <laughs> is that the, um, that the price of solar panels will drop uh, every two years um, by a fixed amount. And that means that since the old solar panels are still working fine, we will reach the equilibrium where you know, we just have enough solar panels and as long as the sun shines, we will have that energy. So energy will become cheaper, although it might not look like that, right? But these are only um, short uh, developments, right? There's uh, another war in uh, uh, another uh, oil exporting country that will increase the, the price of oil and that. But these are only short term, right? In the long term, energy will be for free. And uh, so far, I think that's, uh, that's good news. Uh, the that um, will also um, improve is artificial intelligence. So uh, a couple of years ago, um, I mean, for the people that study uh, machine learning, you know that neural networks is kind of the workhorse of uh, machine learning and they are measured in layers, right? Um, so um, uh, a neural network with, uh, I think it was 100 layers, is able to identify a picture of a dog. So you feed it a, a picture and then it says, oh, it's a dog or it's not a dog. And 
uh, you basically reach the uh, intelligence level of a four-year-old in a way. There's still a difference between machine and human. Uh, a human might discover a dog on a picture that's very uh, uh, blurry, um, whereas if the computer discovers a dog, it might tell you the, the, the breed, right? Whereas the human says like, oh, it's a dog, but I can't tell you if it's a, a German Shepherd or not. Um, and this development is uh, picking up very fast. So uh, especially uh, the big um, uh, content providers, so Facebook, Google, uh, they are very interested to, uh, and also Tesla, they pump a lot of money in that uh, to de further develop that. And um, you might know TensorFlow. TensorFlow is uh, open source um, software from Google um, where you can already do quite advanced machine learning. Uh, applications, and they're going to provide it uh, for free, right, outsourced, right? That means that what they have in their labs is, uh, is tremendously better. And uh, I think it was Google that claimed that they could manage uh, a neural network of more than 1,000 layers, which um, we can only imagine what uh, kind of use cases uh, that uh, bring. And uh, at some airports, especially, well, I know it from Amsterdam Airport, um, you can go through the gate uh, with this automatic check. So you put your passport in, then a camera takes a picture of I your can face. See also it here in Germany. They, they have it. All right, perfect. Okay, so um, they have it, but it, it 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 is not widely used as as far as you know. Yeah. But it will be used, I guess, in yeah. the nearest future. So you can imagine that security, uh, so national security, is a, a very important thing for every government, right? So they are not going to save money there, right? Um, so if that works, they need to trust it, right? Um, so that means that that technology is already on a level that um, um, the, 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 the government trusts it, right? And uh, if this uh, development continues, then I think it's just a matter of time um, when, I would not say when we lose our jobs, but when we will not be necessary anymore, right? And then uh, intelligence becomes free, right? Then it goes through these stages. And now if you're going to combine it, we have free energy, we have uh, free workforce, right? I mean, either robots or something like that. Uh, humans might not be necessary anymore. And I think then it's going to be interesting uh, what we're going to do, because um, there's one uh, um, way that we could see it that nobody of us uh, will have to work anymore and will be uh, consuming the benefits of whatever virtual reality or, or um, yeah, we will not be necessary anymore. And uh, yeah, that's another thing. Anyway, I think it's an interesting thing to, to think about and it, I would like to have a bit of your feedback. What do you think about that? Before we go to the uh, to the coffee break, and we'll have a short coffee break here uh, 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 next door. <laughs> so uh, I would like just to uh, represent you this race your right fellowship, so you can come to me and I can provide you the uh, additional information. RACI is the RIPE Academic Cooperation Initiative, and uh, we have here the special program where academic participants, I mean students, researchers. Uh, and other affiliated bodies and f people that uh, make research with universities. So if you have any presentation, any research on following, but not only following uh, topics, network measurements and uh, analysis, IPv6 deployment, BGP routing, network security, internet governance, peering and interconnectivity, or internet of things, you can apply to RACI program or RIPE Fellowship to come to our meetings. Mm -hmm. Upcoming meetings will be in Minok region, it will be in Tehran uh, on 25, 26 April, and the deadline for applications is 25 February. RIPE 76 will be in Marcel on, in May, so the deadline is for March. Enoch, it is the special event for Eurasian region. It is not Russian one, it is Eurasian one. It will be just be held in Moscow. Uh, it will be in June. And Southeast Europe, it will be in June in Timisoara, Romania. So if you want to apply to these programs, you are welcome. And come to me at the coffee break. I will just describe you how to apply and how to be successful at uh, these applications. 
we have a very low level of participation from this region. I mean, Caucasus, Central Asia, Eastern Europe. So Europe uh, chances are quite good. Let's go to the coffee break and please I would appreciate if you come back in 10 or 15 minutes. Thank you. And also we cover all expenses by the way. Not, co not coffee break but uh, the also coffee break and, and RIPE fellowship and RACI fellowship. So you can come, participate, etc. You know, it's like hanging over here, but this is okay, right? Yeah. Yes, Good, yeah. perfect. Okay, uh, just a reality check. How much time do we have left? 40 minutes. 40 minutes, okay, that's uh, less than I uh, thought. How many, uh, yeah. <laughs> how much? Including audience? our local. All right, okay, then I really need to speed up. How many technical people ha do we have left? Not so much. Not right. so much, yeah, okay. You're gonna work on the flashlight. I mean, no, the, that one is the next one. It's a travel adapter, really cool. Nice, okay. Um, I'm gonna make that uh, a, a bit shorter, so that I'm gonna go a bit faster through it, uh, so that we can focus on the examples, because that's interesting for everyone, independent of the technical uh, understanding. Okay, quickly, first we're gonna talk about internet measurement data sets, then uh, RIPNCC uh, operated networks, for collecting data, big data at the RIPE NCC, and then we're gonna talk about RIPE stat, um, so the service that I'm responsible for, then examples of data analytics, and then I think we're not gonna get to the, to the interactive part. Okay, first of all, when we're gonna talk about data, about measurement data, why is it important? And this is, um, I think that's stemming more or less from uh, engineering, uh, from my engineering point of view, uh, so that applies to every engineer. Um, whatever you can uh, measure, you can improve. Uh, in other words, uh, what you can't measure, you can't improve, right? It's as simple as that. And there's a very interesting term uh, from Eric Ries, um, who wrote uh, The Lean Startup. Uh, I recommend that book if you want to plan to create a startup. Um, and he suggests this cycle of build something, measure it, and then learn from it. And do that all the time, and then you will be successful. Okay, um, there are three data sets. Uh, if you're gonna grasp what they are for, you understand what the internet is about, and you can do stuff with, uh, with, uh, with that data and with internet. And I think that applies not only for people that are specific researchers in uh, internet topics, that uh, applies to that applies to uh, basically everyone, also business, marketing, right? If you want to understand who is your customer, then um, you're going to have a web page, you're going to read the, the web log, and then you're going to see IP addresses in there. You can use these IP addresses and correlate that with the data, and then you get much more information about your customers. Um, all right, let's start with the registry data. Uh, registry data is uh, mainly uh, data that's being used for uh, an administrative uh, purpose. And as an example of uh, administrative data related to the internet and the RIPE um, I'm going to talk about the RIPE database, which is also named WHOIS. So maybe WHOIS you once heard. Um, they have this kind of registry also for uh, domain names, right? And it's very popular there. So if you want to know who owns a, a domain name, then you're going to use who is, and then that information is usually there. That might change with the upcoming uh, data protection regulation from the European Union, because, well, uh, personal data needs to be um, shielded, but that's a different story. So what we're going to see here is um, the data basically describes the internet resources that we mentioned in the beginning, so IP addresses, ASNs. So if we're going to come back to our picture, um, this registration information would be put on top of that, and that's usually in a database. So you're going to see that uh, this uh, network is maintained by SIGO, which is an internet service provider in the Netherlands, 
And in Georgia, it would be, if it's your internet service provider, it would be Beeline or one of the others. And this data is all public. So if you're going to have IP addresses in your web log and you want to uh, extract more information about who is your customer, then you can correlate that with the right database. Um, I think it's a bit outside of the scope how to do it, but uh, at least you have a direction on uh, where to go. Then um, here you're going to see some other examples of registry data. Um, well, we call them organization objects. And these organization objects, they, for example, describe the name of the organization, what type it is. So LIR is a local internet registry uh, versus an RAR, which is a regional registry. That's us. Then on top of that, we would have IANA, but that's also something different. Then you know uh, what kind of persons are uh, responsible for that service. Um, you could also have contact information. So um, that's interesting for uh, if the police thinks that there is uh, uh, unlawful activity from a network, either hacking or, you know, uh, content that's not legal, then they usually use the right database to identify where it's coming from. And uh, then it depends um, how much information is there for the people. Another use case is that the registry information is the only information where you have a mapping between the internet resources and a country. Um, I'm going to show you later on some examples uh, what we can do with this information. But um, Europol, for example, was very happy to, uh, to um, see that we have a, a, a data call, so a widget. Um, if you're going to type in uh, Georgia, then it listed all the networks that are in Georgia. So they at least know what they need to monitor or not. Then uh, the next one is passive measurement data. And uh, passive measurement data has the name because you just observe uh, what is going on, but you don't uh, actively participate. And when I talked about TCP IP networks, you remember every node has a unique number. And this routing table, that is uh, routing information. And that is passive me measurement information. So what we do is um, um, we're gonna tr we try to collect all these routing tables of um, all these nodes. And what you can see in there is, and that's only quickly, if, for example, that link goes down, then um, the routing information would change. So here we have uh, 2, 5, 4, and then 3. If this link breaks down, so like this one, then, and that's the decentralized uh, thing of the internet, then it will go this way, right? Again, I mean, this stems from the from the creation uh, to withstand the atomic strike. So uh, if, if that part goes down, then it still finds a way to uh, reroute that. OK. And the routing data is basically uh, the routing table from all these nodes collected together. And that changes over time, right? And um, that is also a benefit um, of the routing table if you're going to collect the data, because you can go back in time and see when, for example, a country was not accessible on the internet. And there are plenty of uh, these examples. Um, if you want to visualize that, then it would look something uh, like here. And, um, and um, if we're going to have, for example, an IP address, let's say uh, I'm going to make it simple. The IP address is just one. and that network in the middle is responsible for that. So uh, assume that's, um, that's Netflix. Um, then the points on the outside are the access networks. So these are, all the, the, these are all the internet users like you who want to connect uh, to Netflix. Then the internet at some point in time would have a represent representation like that. And each of these nodes is a network uh, in itself. And uh, this is very helpful, right? Um, because you can see when, uh, net, uh, when services are available. For example, um, at a DDoS, um, 
you could theoretically switch off uh, this node and then all these uh, networks, they have a problem. They can't connect to that anymore. So um, is, is that kind of um, clear what that means? So uh, if that person want to connect to Netflix, then they need to rely on, on these networks in between, on these nodes. And of course, the internet can reroute. So if you're going to take out one node, then it will change its structure. If it's possible to reroute it over another node, then it will do that. If that's not possible, yeah, you're not on the internet anymore with uh, all that impact. Then um, the other part, the third uh, part of uh, measurement data is active measurement data. And in contrast to passive measurement data, for active measurement data, you need to do something to get the results. And uh, here I have an example of a trace route. Um, a trace route is uh, an application that sends uh, data from um, one node to the next, and then to the next, and then to the next. So, and you always get how long it takes until, until the package, so the data, um, uh, is, um, so first of all, it starts here, right? And then it sends data to number five. And then at number five, that is a standard, it replies saying like, um, you send me that, I send it back. And then number four knows the runtime and know how long it takes, if it will come back, right? It's like an echo, you know? And with Traceroute, you can test all these uh, different connections. So in this picture, so if you're going to remove that again, then um, I have um, here two uh, situations. First of all, we have a cable cut between 1 and 2, and we have between 6 and 5. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this will represent that it will just take longer, right? So it's, it's not, not maybe an optical connection, it's maybe a, a, a copper connection, so it takes longer. The results that... Um, you would get from active measurements if you would, for example, in this uh, one, send every hour a data package to one and six, and then you're going to record what you're going to get back. Then these are the results that you would get. So basically, it would say like, oh, sending from node four to five, that is OK. I, saw I see no differences. Sending from five to six um, takes a very long time. Uh, from five to two is OK, and two to one is not working at all, right? So um, this is the very, very simplified uh, results that you would get from uh, Traceroute. And with this data, you have many more applications what you can do with that, right? And um, there are also some, uh, some downsides with it, right? So with active measurements, that's actually a lot of other measurements as well. It's, for example, ping, HTTP measurements, um, HTTP is the protocol that you use if you're going to fetch a web page, right? And you can also convert that into a measurement in the, in the way that you're going to say, like, hey, I don't want to have your web page. Just uh, send me back um, the information that you received my request, right? And if you're going to do that regularly over a long time, you can uh, see uh, how the, the latency changes, right? I mean, ideally, you would assume that if you're going to connect to a web page 10 years ago, then it's slower than right now. But that's not always the case. And uh, then there are also DNS measurements and broadband measurements. I guess broadband measurements, uh, you have uh, experience with that. So if you're going to use, for example, speedtest.net, then you can test how much data you uh, can send through your connection, right? That basically defines um, how well you can uh, watch Netflix or YouTube uh, videos, right? If you don't have a lot of bandwidth, then um, there's no use in um, watching uh, videos that have a lot of traffic. I'm not sure if you ever used uh, speed test. I, I guess not, yeah. You, you did, yeah. So, um, because sometimes it's a argue, arguing with your internet service provider. You know, you pay for 20 megabits per second, and then your internet service provider gives you internet, and then you're going to say, like, yeah, it's a bit slow. And then, you know, it's a bit of uh, argumentation. Then you can use speedtest.net, 
and then you're going to see if it's really 20 megabits uh, per second or maybe 10 or something like that, right? From the research perspective, uh, the problem with active measurements is that um, you can't measure everything to every node, right? I mean, we are talking about millions of uh, computers. You can't always send a, 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 a packet uh, to every node every second, right? I mean, you would flood the internet. So that's not possible. Entire coverage of the internet is just impossible. So that's why, um, that's a downside, right? Uh, the example that I gave you with the, with the DDoS attack, with the uh, Mirai uh, network, um, we didn't see that with our measurement network because we haven't had uh, any measurements configured to these nodes, right? And after it's over, you know, you can't travel back in time if you don't uh, measure that. All right, good. Then we're going to come to the uh, two... Uh, networks that the Redmin CC maintains. Um, the first one is an uh, example for passive measurements. That's the routing information service. And then the other one is RIPE Atlas. And um, I think you have heard, or some of you have heard about RIPE Atlas. That's an example of active measurements. I quickly explain each of those. I'm going to show you links so that, that you, you can follow up. Um, the RIS uh, network uh, consists of around 18 uh, route collectors. So these are um, um, computers that we have distributed all over the world and they do nothing else than collecting the routing table from uh, other computers and that's what they do all the time and um, we do that since uh, 1999 and the good thing is that with this passive measurement data we see basically 99 percent of everything what's happening on the internet and uh, later on, I'll show you some examples what that uh, meant. Then the other one is uh, RIPE Atlas. Uh, RIPE Atlas is something that we uh, started to develop in 2010. What you're going to see on this map is all the places where we're going to have a RIPE uh, Atlas uh, probe. And um, we rely on, um, on volunteers. Uh, so we gave them out at conferences and uh, people connected it at home. And as soon as you connect it, they're going to start to measure, right? So we have defined targets and they're going to send ping and trace load measure measurements all the time. And then we're going to collect this data and we're going to process it in uh, Amsterdam. There is one, uh, uh, two Atlas probes uh, that Roman has that uh, they have a problem, uh, but we're going to fix that. So, um, just recently we um, reached more than 10,000 probes, which yeah, is, uh, is a lot. So, more than 10,000 active probes. Uh, we distributed 18,000 probes, but um, the other 8,000 probes, I think people forgot about that, or they are not working. If we are talking about measurements, and that's only quickly, uh, so we're going to support ping me measurements, trace route measurements, DSS, DS, uh, DNS measurements, SSL, HTTP, and NTP uh, measurements. If that doesn't tell you anything, that's uh, no problem, because it's a very technical slide. Um, <coughs> with this network, um, we're going to collect um, um, more than 5,000 uh, measurement results per second and uh, all together at the moment we have uh, roughly 18,000 uh, parallel measurements uh, running. Well, if you're interested, if you want to have more information, uh, Roman will talk about uh, RIPE Atlas and there's also the URL. And uh, well, if you're curious how they look like, here's a picture of one of these uh, probes. Then, uh, related to big data, um, <coughs> I mean, big data is a big word, <laughs> but um, it's uh, to give you a, a kind of a understanding of how much data we collected so far. So the RIPE database that I was talking before um, has roughly around 10 gigabytes. I mean, that's uh, not so much. You can easily fit that on a, on a um, very modern USB stick. Um, but the, the passive and the active measurement data that we collected, that does, does not fit on a USB stick anymore. Um, so that's 12 uh, petabyte of uh, data. Um, and, uh, well, we have some kind of architecture to store this uh, data. And um, the next three slides are very technical, so, um, yeah, I'm going to go through them quickly. Um, 
this is uh, showing the evolution of our data backends. And uh, in 2010, we started with a prototype, uh, which we called uh, SGINREB, which is uh, the science group, uh, the, so the group that developed that, um, the Internet Research Database. Um, and it was meant as a prototype to uh, show that we can handle that much of data. And uh, in 2010, uh, then we started to develop that in, uh, in a Hadoop uh, environment. And for the more technical people, Hadoop is uh, one of the first uh, systems um, that allowed you to build uh, big databases with commodity hardware. So uh, it's coming from Google. Um, so Google uh, developed uh, a paper and that was called uh, um, Big Table. And uh, Big Table, the idea of Big Table was implemented as an open source project in Hadoop. Um, at that time, uh, Hadoop was um, pretty immature, and um, yeah, that was uh, a very hard lesson to learn. So we had to develop a lot uh, ourselves, which made it very complex. And well, that led to. Um, at the end of 2012, we, we, threw, we threw that away and we developed a new system, which um, I think is just uh, the learning experience that uh, people have to go through when they want to store a lot of data. So um, this is the current stack that we're going to use. Um, so here we have the data collection, which is either these uh, ripe atlas probes or the risk collectors, and they're going to send the data to Amsterdam and they're going to do that via message queuing. Um, again, it's a very technical slide. And then uh, from these message queues, we either store the data in files and then we um, um, give access to them via FTP. Or we're going to use uh, MapReduce uh, frameworks um, or a subset of that um, pick and spark. And we store it in, in HBase tables. HBase tables is um, relational uh, databases for big data, um, which is, uh, in essence, a key value store, but a big key value store. And um, the access to these HBase tables, uh, we're going to use either um, a Thrift mainly, or we also have real-time streaming. So um, we're going to use it for web applications that are real-time. Uh, so the data from Atlas comes in, and then uh, a few seconds later, you're going to see it um, on the web page, which is definitely very useful for uh, network monitoring. Because if you're going to have an Atlas probe somewhere in this world and that um, shows some interesting data, then you want to get to this data as soon as possible. And yeah, for that, we have um, uh, this pipeline developed. Um, I think altogether it's not very simple to maintain a system like that. Um, and Facebook and, and uh, Google and Twitter, and they all have that, but they have more engineers than we do. Um, so um, we need to uh, ha make some compromises sometimes. And of course, we learned a lot, right? Because, I mean, we have around three or four engineers working on it, whereas, I mean, for Facebook and Google, four engineers is... It's like, uh, I don't know, I mean, you have four engineers writing the introduction paper for, oh, yeah, we want to do that. So um, we learned some, uh, some les lessons on that. Um, um, first of all, uh, simplicity is uh, very important. Everything that's not necessary, you know, just remove it. Then when you're going to design a system like that, then always keep data quality uh, in mind over performance, because that will... Uh, bite you back later on. And um, when you're going to have more data, then you need to test more. Um, I mean, it sounds a bit logical, but usually you tend to forget that if you're going to use uh, applications like that. And uh, agility is, uh, is very important in the development process. So always look that uh, you're going to focus on data quality and that you're going to keep the system agile. Uh, yeah, then uh, there are differences between scale up and scale out. Um, I think you know what that means. Uh, if you're going to scale up, it means that you have the same machine, but you just give it more RAM or CPUs or something like that. And scale out is that you're going to add more of the same machine, and then you reach uh, higher performance through that, right? 
Um, so the entire movement of big data is based on scale out. Um, because you're going to break up a bigger problem into smaller pro problems, and then you let uh, normal hardware deal with that, right? And uh, I think that was the, the real breakthrough of uh, big data that enabled every company to theoretically do it. Um, well, at our company, we have... Um, so the question is, how many clusters do you want to have with Hadoop? And uh, theoretically, um, you can have one cluster and <laughs> store all your data in there, but I, I, I would really um, not recommend that, because uh, if you're going to update the software, there are a lot of surprises that uh, you can't think of. And um, these slides are actually already a bit old, because on these slides, no, actually two months, the slides are uh, two months old. Um, we had two uh, production clusters. Um, just last week, we had a third one. Um, it's just more, it's easier for uh, our production uh, team to play around with more clusters. And um, the two clusters that we have, one has 150 uh, machines, and the other one has 110 um, machines. OK, um, what's also uh, a good realization is that uh, hardware is cheap and engineers are not. So if you can solve something with adding more hardware, then that's usually um, a good uh, in investment. All right, then we're going to come to the next point, which uh, is the open data platform of the RIPMCC. Um, how much time do we have left? Not much. Not much, OK. that's. That's very specific. Thank you for, uh, very much for that. Um, all right, let's do that very quickly. Um, so uh, when I joined the RIP NCC, uh, this was one of my first projects that I started with. And the basic idea about this one is there is a lot of data, and we want to have uh, people use the data. So how do we do that? And RIP that is the, well, is the solution that we came up with. Uh, first of all, there is much more data uh, in it. So uh, we have the RIPE database, we have routing data, we have active measurement data. We also have geolocation data. And geolocation data is a very simple data set. Um, you have an IP address and you want to know where it's being used. This is geolocation data. Uh, so the mapping between IP addresses and uh, location. Uh, this is a very um, difficult data set. Um, if you come up with a solution how to make this data set accurate, yeah, I mean, you can sell that to a lot of people and they pay a lot of money for that. Um, then we have blacklist data. So uh, if your IP address is being involved or listed in some blackli blacklist, then it's being um, included in there. Then we have three layers. And the reason for that is um, because when RIPESTAT was developed, um, if we want to give uh, everyone access to all these different data sets, then just one layer doesn't cut it. That would not work. These layers are built so they can uh, work together. And uh, on the lowest level, we have the RIPE data uh, API, which just provides you with raw data. Then we have the widget API, which shows you graphical things. And then you have uh, the thing that you're going to see when you go to stat.ripe.net. And um, this is, for example, this one. So um, here you can enter um, a resource, uh, an IP address, an ASN. You can also enter a domain name or a country um, code. And then after you hit the Go button, you are going to get to the result page. And um, the result page is this one, but first I want to show you uh, this one. Um, so RIPES that became very popular. Um, in 2010, when we started, we had around 10 um, requests per day. So we had around 10,000 requests per day. And uh, over the last um, seven years, that uh, changed. And at the moment, we have, um, well, per minute, roughly around 45,000 uh, requests. And on a daily basis, we have more than 50 million requests. And that's coming from uh, more than 1.5 million uh, visitors um, uh, worldwide. It's, it's very interesting because um, especially the data API drives uh, these uh, requests a lot. And um, we have one data call that uh, is, uh, what's my IP address? So the basic idea is that if you're going to put that in your browser or if you're going to call this data call, 
then it will return with the IP address that you are seeing on the public internet. And in December, we got a, a huge increase of requests from uh, Turkey. And I looked into the logs. Um, the user agent um, was a, a, a browser that's being used on Android devices. And it always happened around 6 o'clock in the evening, um, um, 5 o'clock UTC, that suddenly we, we got from, um, from a few requests to more than a million uh, per hour. And I think what happened, what's happening is that someone in Turkey created a, a, a mobile app that bypasses the public um, uh, internet surveillance, and for that they need that data. So um, it's very nice to see that they trust us um, and uh, that uh, they use it. But on the other side, I mean, we got also um, we had to add new machines. So at the moment, we have um, 18 uh, front-end servers uh, just serving uh, this data. Anyway, um, then this is the result page. Um, if you're going to go there, if you're going to enter something, then there are a couple of uh, widgets. Um, they show the, the, the data, and the data is grouped in, uh, if it's routing data, DNS data, um, RIPE database registry. So if you're going to go there, you can easily find that. The RIPE that widget API, um, so all the visualizations that you see uh, is built with open uh, technologies that you can include that on your own web page. That's sometimes very interesting for an uh, internet service provider to show how they are uh, being perceived from the outside. Um, I want to show you some outstanding examples. Um, this is uh, PG Play. It shows you uh, for an um, IP uh, space, it shows you the structure of connections between networks, how um, um, that is reachable from all over the world. If you're going to type in your uh, int, uh, IP address or your IP prefix and this is empty, then you're not on the internet. Um, it's very simple. And it also is interactive, so you can play it uh, and you can see how the, the nodes are changing. Um, but again, I might go a little bit too deep. Then the routing history uh, shows um, how visible your IP space is over time. And uh, Green means that it's very visible, and uh, for example, red means that it is not visible at all. And uh, so, and th this is sometimes why I think that um, uh, I'm not the only child in <laughs> in uh, in that field. Um, so, someone um, was manipulating um, the prefixes uh, when it was seen and when it was not seen on the internet. To, to draw a cat uh, in this visualization. And uh, you might uh, uh, know that meme, uh, it's the uh, Nyan cat. Um, there's also a lot of history about that, how that became into existence. But um, so each of these lines, um, they represent an IP space. And if, I mean, people that can control if it's on the internet or not, if they're going to play around in a in a um, synchronized way, then they can draw things on this widget. And that was actually the intention. Um, it's a bit uh, worrying because uh, we're running out of IPv4 address, and that was done with uh, IPv4 uh, space. But uh, I mean, just as an uh, explanation, during these times, that prefix was not on the internet. Um, when it's green, then it was on the internet. So. I'm pretty sure there was no customer behind that, because otherwise they would be uh, very unhappy. But uh, I think it's, it's, a nice, uh, it's a nice art thing. Abuse C, yeah, I mean, we are the registry, so if someone has a problem with IP address, then uh, we're going to provide the contact to contact them, right? So it's being used a lot by the police. Uh, not so important. Here, this is an important one. I told you that... Um, the registry data is one of the only uh, data sources to see how many resources are within a country. So what we did is we combined the information that in that's in the registry and the routing uh, data. So we monitored all the prefixes that are, cons that are um, well considered in a country and we showed how many of them are visible. 
And what you can see here is um, the example for Macedonia over the uh, years. The blue line is the number of prefixes that are visible on the internet. And um, not so long ago, um, we saw um, a couple of countries doing something like that. And uh, especially during the Arab Spring, um, we had that a lot. So uh, it started out in Libya. Um, Gaddafi uh, turned off the internet because uh, in these countries, um, they usually have one uh, telecom operator and they control the access to the worldwide internet. Something like that would not be possible in the Netherlands or um, I think also in Georgia because there are so many connections to the outside, right? So the government can't just say like, hey, guys, you need to switch off the internet. The reason was uh, a political motivated because um, the opposition, they were uh, coordinating itself via Facebook, WhatsApp and uh, something like that. So to cut this uh, possibility, they just uh, turned off the internet. Interesting fact, uh, a year later, um, we saw the similar thing in uh, Egypt, um, but they did it a little bit smarter. Um, uh, the way it was done in Libya, they uh, switched off the, the, the cable, so they were cutting the cable, and that means that in routing data, um, your prefixes are not uh, visible anymore, right? And then it's very obvious that you're off the internet. Um, whereas in Egypt, they did not um, change the routing table, but they just uh, throttled the bandwidth. And um, so instead of having a lot of bandwidth where a lot of data can flow through, they uh, made that smaller and smaller that uh, the IP space is still reachable, but you can't use it because it's so slow, right? Um, which reminded me a little bit of um, if someone provided them with a training for uh, how to deal with the internet for dictators. But um, at least, well, it showed that they learned from that. And uh, this is about the data API. If you want to have more information about that, then um, follow this link. Uh, country reports is not that uh, important right now. Um, some examples of data analytics. Um, we talked about uh, IPv6. Um, with all this data that uh, we collected, we could um, identify um, first of all, the status of, of IPv4. So this is uh, on the top one. What you're going to see um, here, and this is a logarithmic scale, uh, here you're going to see the number of internet users per IP address per country, and here the population growth. And um, countries that are in this area, they have a problem because they have a huge population growth and they already have a lot of internet users per IP address. So this is going to be more and more uh, uh, a problem for them. Um, and I think we will talk about that um, um, at government meetings or something like that. Then uh, we also looked at the deployment status of IPv6. And uh, what I showed you before uh, from Google, um, it was around 22%. Uh, so 22% of all the users that are coming to Google are using IPv6. Um, I always have a bit of a problem with this graph because uh, it doesn't show the usage of IPv6 uh, globally, so it's not a holistic view because it's purely the people that are using Google and that's uh, not the entire internet population. And if we're going to look at a different data source, this is related to um, BGP, then we also see that uh, the real number is a bit lower. Okay. Um, well, we could also uh, identify with um, machine learning uh, uh, techniques which country um, at w in which year had a positive effect on IPv6 deployment and which one had a negative uh, effect on IPv6 deployment. Then uh, here we have another example of uh, how many users we have on IPv4. Um, also not so important. Um, this is a very interesting one. Uh, because it uh, very much shows what you... <laughs> hey, I will be done very soon, right? Yeah. There's no reason to, uh, to uh, escalate that. Um, for this, uh, so what I'm going to show you next is a combination of uh, location data and active measurement data. Uh, remember, uh, we have uh, a couple of probes in, in most of the countries, and... Uh, 
what we are doing, well, first I need to say that what you're going to see right now is not necessarily applicable to, um, to traffic. Um, but um, this is the picture for Georgia. All right, before I'm going to show you that, because there's an awesome uh, transition effect that I built in there. I had to do that at the end of the presentation. Uh, so we have a couple of probes in Georgia. Then what we did is uh, we used traceroute and we sent uh, um, data from one probe to the other probe in Georgia. And we let that do for all of the probes within the country. So what you would you assume? You would assume that uh, if you're going to send data from one node in the country to another node in the country, that um, the data stays in the country, right? Yeah. And um, um, if it doesn't stay in the country, then uh, it has two implications. And I'm going to show you that after I show you the results. No, really. I had this burning fire effect, but that's the conversion from Keynote to PowerPoint. Oh, that's disappointing. Can you see that? So, on the left side, am I over time? Over time? No, no, no. No? All right, okay. Good. <laughs> I already thought I'm, I'm over, I know that I'm over time. So, first of all, what this, uh, what this uh, thing shows you is uh, that IPv6 is not that uh, popular in uh, Georgia. That's why we don't have any results for that. But anyway, I mean, the internet still runs on IPv4. So um, what we're going to see here is that um, Georgia is, well, you know that better than I do. Georgia is here, right? Um, and this is how um, data travels when you're going to send data from uh, one place in Georgia to another place in Georgia. So, for example, we have Stockholm here. We have um, uh, that's D kicks in uh, Cologne, and um, there must be also a node in Bulgaria. So that means um, for the for the for the data itself, it might be super nice because I mean you see the world, right? You see a bit of Europe, but uh, there are two implications. The one is a technical um, that it increases the latency, right? If I want to send uh, data to uh, you, and I first uh, need to send it uh, somewhere outside, and then they're going to come back, it will take much longer, right? So that means that um, uh, internet is not as uh, efficient as possible. And the other implication is um, um, from a, a political more, or a, a national security related one. Um, because for a government, you can only control what's, what's within your contingency, right? So basically, what's within your uh, country, you can control that. Money? Yeah, 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 sure. I mean, you're going to pay for uh, all these uh, transfers, right? But uh, that's the technical end, also the business. You're right, three technical business uh, end. The other one is uh, national security, right? Um, uh, we know since Snowden that um, uh, some governments are looking into the data of other governments. And um, so if your data um, leaves the country, then you don't have any way to control uh, if that's being um, observed or not, right? So that's, that's the downside of that. And yeah, I think that's it. Let me see. Yeah, there is a future outlook on what we want to do uh, further down the line, but summarized, we want to use more uh, data and more machine learning uh, uh, algorithms. Um, data verification is also an interesting one that we need to focus on. Um, this example was from November when we had the GITI uh, conference in the Hua Ling Hotel in uh, Tbilisi. Um, so on the left side, you're going to see uh, the World Bank data that 50% of uh, people in Georgia have uh, internet access. If we're going to talk with um, the, uh, uh, what was it, the Georgian National Communication Commission 2015, the annual report, um, they come to a number of 95. So I don't know, we need to verify what is the right number in a way. And then, um, that's it. 
yeah, that's the interactive session, and I think we're not going to do that. Um, it's more like, what do you think? Will the internet change? I think the internet will change. And uh, some drivers for these changes will be uh, definitely uh, the blockchain. Um, I think blockchain is at the moment in Georgia uh, a big topic. Very popular, yeah. Um, well, Maybe you can also make a seminar for us for blockchain. Yeah. How next time. yeah. I mean, for me, blockchain is, um, I don't know, it's just uh, hashes of two data sets hashed. But other people see more in that. Um, then we have Internet of Things, then Artificial Intelligence, and this is also a very interesting one, because um, on the global Internet, what we're going to see right now is that, um, you know, the, the big content provider, they are driving everything. Um, it's not the Internet, well, let's say, like, it's not the transit provider that are laying uh, cables uh, between continents anymore. It's... Uh, Facebook, Google, they, la they lay out their own internet cables. And what they also do is, they're going to put caches uh, in their data centers, very close to the customer. Um, that means that you as a customer, um, you will be uh, served data that's not far away, right? Efficiency reason and also business reason. Um, but there is a downside to that, right? And I think that also plays a little bit with net neutrality. Because the internet uh, is very successful because it's this huge knowledge uh, system, right? Everything is connected. If in the long run, uh, these big corporations will put caches very close to you, then it might um, be a problem for the interconnection of the internet, right? But yeah, we'll see. Um, and I think with that, we're going to conclude it. Um, what I would like to have is um, still your feedback, um, questions that we can't answer here right now. Um, that's my email address. Um, please uh, send me something. <laughs> and you can take me uh, also my business cards yeah. to apply for Ray Price, et cetera. Each and any question you have for, uh, for us. Uh, so thank you, Christian. Let's pause to him. And. We have here uh, the section from our local, local partners, RIP, NCC fellows, RIP fellows. So, and we'll start from Lado Svanadze. Lado, welcome. Lado or Vladimir? Vladimir. Christian, thank you for you for the interesting presentation, for the interesting Information. Wahan. Information. Thank you for you also. Uh I mean, I, I know you should curious. use the right finger. How many yeah. engineers it takes to? Uh, okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, I'll be talk in Georgian. Yes, no sure. problem. Mevar lado so anadzem. Rogor smo gašen et vahanma. Var ripen si si ripi sa skot rasis fellowshipi. Hello, we have Budapesti ripi ripi da pina sebit. Akademi uri hazi ta ikod za sakom od mindagi tato zali ensa intereso. I mean, there are to Tamashi, Kuala Persi, Informatia, Kakta, Bukle Tebi Darik Daka, Saidia, Informatia, Aristavi Tedla Enebi, Otri Honize Batariba, Nuvet Honize Bazarides, Kaumne, Moscow Shiaris, probably Muria Chunzamo, Seneva Sistema. Meota, Tarmot, and Internet is going to have initiatives, as I said, Arasam Toro Borganizatia, Tower, Kiberus of Trubis Martulab, Mushop, Noam Mutlub, Mushopuke, Tahobit, or it's a third metrida, or it's a third. Minda shake it to the Haramnia Tatsulia, Sakatos Kibros of Trubis, Kiber Sirtias to what? Over Migashi at Kunisava? What? Aris Mosas Rebaru Aris Mosas Rebarum, Sakatos Kiber Sirti, Aris Sakmot, Tautsulia, the skeptical Tamuki de Bolivogchen, Ami Martulebit. May Minda Batno? Natalia Storia, Roshek Story Zoratagnista. 
Kasulit zeli sakratos kibersi kibersi aptkoj smartul e aptikos sak mod na kopier jonz. Aptkoj me opro mokle aptikoj me opro aptkoj hindro dro shi shi shat kudule biwar. Nat sak mod na kopier mi da gitra trom kamukhonda ori sak mod idi reporti angarishi. Esaris pirueli ko esaris aitio esaris saite shi shi telekomunikacije bis gaerti ane ba. Mat ga mokon snes orietas. Čudi me cilis tukme ti evnis ki beru sa ptkoj bi se vesi globaluri indeksi. Sada sa kartuolo mohta meru jadk za globaluri tim da gitrat. Evropi se mi vartule bitvi kavit čun meru meru jadk za esto ent čemdik vatsevat. Da deset skoj ne pšiu kavit peru jadk za. Esa je sakmo od kargi deseti što što ambi što mi htseva. Meure reporti kamo kog da u koj orete se čudi me cilis septemberši. Ես կամ ուղղնա ես տոյն չյար, սասիտի ակադեմիա էլեկտրոնի մարդուլովիս ակադեմիա էգա, սակմոտ սիտի աղիարի բուլ եմ թիլում Սոպլիոշի, դա մատ մի էր կամ ուղղնի բուլի ես Հաղաց � Ես կավիլ տամաս ուծեպ, այս այս ուկե այդի ուսմ էր գամոքեղ նեպուլի կիբերոսապտխով ես գլոբալ ուրի ինդեկսի, այմի տա ակշե շեվ չեր դերտի որիցուսի տա աղնիշնորում, այս շեպասեպա մողթա խուտի կրետերիու� Да, ме хуте го таа нам шрам лоба. Сакате ли ми ше даре би дабали кула ми го техникори ми мартуле би, кога ми динаре ром ес ми мартуле во мојот хосак моти таа пина се бас, таа Џерџи Робит а што кога арајте сакате ли ми мартуле би ганитаре боли. Јурдул мартуле баши, Јурдул сам мартуле би база, сакате сакате ли ми го магали ше пас еба, ес дамо кеде боли, кој ми мар мазером, сакате ли могле дроши ше дзло, ше му ше би, анони информација од сабтхој би ше сакеп, е би дае до кебе русабтхој би се еронули стратегија да само кме до кегма, орите се саме чим мухтеса, да, а ми шем дека укое дае до меоре кебе русабтхој би се би се стратегија, е суке орите се чуди ме тези јануарши موازیلا پریمیر مخیلی. تا می پاتیم کند رو، آمی استرای استراتژیت می مشاور کار کوه اوتیلات. چهار طولی قوی آمی مشاور آمی مرتولی بود. اسرا استوریت اسمی مرتولی ببی روملز سعی کوک می موتیم ولی سکریتریوم می بی. اخر اونجا داویدیت ساکر توشی روملی روملی ارگانیزاسیه بیا توی اتاق تو ات کی بر روسات خوبی بس. وی روملی ارگانیزاسیه مشاورس. آره آره روملی ارگانیزاسیه بیا تو ات ساکم توی پو کردزو آره سمت تورو بو نور سمت تورو بیت چه می آید تو ات ا Արիս յուստիթի սախշի արիս սիպի, մի մոնաց եմ տագացույս ագենտո, սատաց շետի սասև է Սերդ գովջի, պիրոլի Սերդի շեիքնեք որիատաս ացից լիսի յանուարշի, արիս ասև է կիբերուսարտխոյովիս բյուրո, թադոտության մ Որոտա ստորմեց լիս դեկեմբերշի իկնեպ կրիմնալուր պոլիցիս դեպարտամենտիս կվեշի կիբերդանանշավության բրձոլիս սամարդոլով, ակվ իկնեպ ծիպրուլի էկսպերտիսիս կանգոպիլ է բարդոլ Ասև է արիս ուկե որիցած սամեցի ալեսի իկնեպա պերսունալուր մունացեմ էպիս դացույս ինսպեկտորիս ոպիսի, կալդայինս ոպիսի է ծախմի մոգլետ ուպրո, շե մոգլեպիտ, դա ուկե սուշի իկնեպա ուկե ես արիս որիցած 
سانم شد ایوب زیگ داده بودی. اصلا می دانید که ترم ام مرتول بیت چارتولی آریس آرستان تر رو بورگانیزاتیف ساموکالو کوسازو کدی می باشد کات. آت ماتچولیس می دانیم چنو کرینا سازد کات. آت از کات خواتیلی دا مواتیو با می مرتول بیت. تو آشوش کرینا ای کو ارتیتی آرستان تر رو بورگانیزاتیف رول مات. اوریت از رواتیل ساکارتوشی آگوستوس و میچوسون تا دیدی شد ایوای کو ساکارتوس گان خورتیلی بولی. زودت چارتولی کو کرینا می مرتول بیت میشه باشه ساکمو تو کات. آت داده بیت رولی شیا سرولا. ماتوی مویت Ekspertem by Martu Lebit, Rom Lebit, Chartu Lebit, and Sakartos, Kiberus Abtkobis, Datsus Martu Lebit. As we are in the Kerdo sector, we are in the UGT Orient Logic, we are in the Grignet, we are in the Bazaar, we are in the Bazaar, we are in the Bazaar, and 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 we are in the Bazaar, از کریتیک اولی پرستوریس داد سوا زم. از این نوا پیروزی پرتنیت ساکرتوس است. تو که مثال می‌زدی. آکادمی است مرتول بیت. ساکرتوس اونیورسیت شیک نه. سپتیالوری مدل کی به روسات خویش مرتول بیت. روم نیست. متخو متخو از چه می‌نیاتی بیتی خواهد شد. زیت کاکاتی بولی. تو که انتان اونیورسیت چی گم می‌بارم. کیورگی کاتی تادی روم. آسیا تشویق کرده تو بیا. خوب می‌گویی. ماستانی که نباید اگر می‌بارم، از آویکت خود تاسو کات سگانی که به روسات خوبیش مرتول بود. دوگرد سر تشویق است. اوسابت خوبی بیش شماد گنیلی ناتیلی. آسیب جورنالیستی که پاکوت هست. تو آری جورنالیستی هم سر تاسیب است. آویکت هست. سپتیالی کورسی بیای مرتول بود. که آسیب رو آری سر کارکولی مرتول بود. آری سیب آری سوست تکنیکولی سازو کادوی با. تو سه خود تو سه خود که این فیس بوکس سکیوریتی دنتی دوت جی آریس. آسیب تی گویردی آریس. ساده است که نخواد سه خود سه اینترنت سوستاتی بی سکوت بوسه زر به بیده با که به روسات خوبی بیش مرتول بود. بود تا خد روشی شش گودولی وارد شوند. کاتا ولو که او پرو که ویدان اتلاشی اساری سکوت کیبرشت هوی بیاست. سکوت را کیبرشت هوی مختصر کرد ولوشی. تا رومل تلی بیگو کلازه سکوت چون زد تالیان صدیدا سنتیوری. اسی قرارت که ما اون دا اوریت از رواتلیس رواتلیس آگوستوس اومی. تا امی اماس موقع باسه یه اوریت از روای رواتلیان تو تخمیت اوریت از تو تخمیت از چاتلیت سکرت ولوشی کان خورسید دا سکم ما اوتیم زیم کیبرشت هوی بی رومل ماز دازیان پاکتورات ات کارکولی زیانی میاد کنده دا قول که برشته تواند مدیو دا روسیه دان. آسیتی ارگانیزاسی آریس APT روا، از APT از داروا، روملیس بازی ربولیا، پتر بروکشی، روملیس آریس هاکرول داجگو پی باریس. می‌نیسپشی تا نو مشاور رگورد. تی تیلی تخریدان سعیم از یک ساعت شد ساعت هم. دانو ویست درست استانداردولی سعیم مشاور ساعت بیا. گرافیکی از روملیس آخر تیلی من شت هربس. استور دست گاه ترتیب میزی زی میسرم ماتی دادگین آدیلات مخرت است کلا پی. کی رات کم اونتا؟ این دو هاکر رگورد ساعتی از یک ساعت گ شارچو بیش از یه. خود آخه بته گری داریم که در اسارت فایرایی است. اسارت ارگانیزاسیا آمریکایی ارگانیزاسیا ساکمان رو تغییر بولی رومیلیس دیپس کارکول رپورت است. اما مرتول لبید. ماتیم چه تغییر بولی کلیه و ماتشون اروم استورات اس شت لبید. آموزشولیگو استورات روستیان ایپیتی از در رویس میسمیر. ساکرتو اش اسی وریت است خودم تیاشی مختا که بر شت لبید ساکمان سریوزولی پیانسولی تو تز اسی کو از دیرتی از دسامی مایسی از در روستیات ساعت سامسی یا تاسام دیده خوب دایی پی میسام مرتی خو چهار تولیم که برشته وای ساکم مودی دی مسیره بولشته وای خو اسو که ای خو رگورت سعیاره بنو که ای خو اینترنت پروایدری کارکولی برای میوزد اینترنت پروایدری سامی مرتول لبید نیت آسیا و روسیه خودم تا شیکو پیروزی پرسید نتی روسیه چه موهیده او که اسلام روسیه ساکم تبوس آلمان دیگه روسیه ساکر تو دوست روس کارکو ساکم تبوس دکتر روسی میتونه از کارکو روسیه تبوس پیروزی دادیم از کجاست کارپوریس از سایتی و روسیه خودم از یانوارشی تا میره که مختص ساکم تبوس میشه سپاره زد تا تا دست خم استورت اسلام روسیه ساکم تبوس دادن ارثی آسیا تیکیس یه ای استورت سعی نمی‌کنم شکی تخواریس، اکمی دیویس خواستم شوریس می‌ده خم. این تو اولیت است خودم این تلیس از ده خود آپلیس مخت سعی می‌کنم سعی نمی‌کنم شکی تیوا. آدا پرانگولی تیوی خودی تیوی مندی از تیزه مخت که که برشته تیوا. از گان خورتیل دا اسلاموری خالی پاتیس میر. از روی آدا مگر سامی توی شم دکی گیو فایر ام دادو. کلی وارو مسی خود آموزشی روسیتی دان. تا روگر سایدان اس خته با ماتی کلی و داموش با الگوریتم بیست روگر خته بشه تیوا کد بی تا چند زیب بولی اینا از خیلی سر اسی مودیو دست رو درست دیدن من در ازش تابیس بولی این دیوید دلور خیلی سر اسی بسازن مرتول بید اسی ویس درو رازت میگی تخرت خیلی دان ساگا موسیقی شد آتامت اما نزگار کوتی ات تابیس رولیشی اسوا داد گنده زن باشی آنو اسی که بگا شتی وای کورسی دنگا کورسی لبولی تهیه منزه مگرام گاکته اسلامی خالی پاتی ساخته لیت. 
کی آنو هست که شیاطین خدمت خونه. هاکر زوج زوج داده تیک کنه بسیم متد بسیم رو نو هاکر ایتلو با کارک هاکر تو رامنیات دامالولی است که کی برسیم تشه خو؟ ای پی میشن رامنیات مال مال است خو؟ موسکو نه خدمت باشه تو مگرام شلی با موزامبی کی دنشه مودی شدی وقت کنترل میری ام کوالس رو میخوای بشه سبب میشه میگی کوالس موسکو نه تو کای هاکر شلی با بر میگی کوالس میشه سات. اس ارز مکلت چون کی برسی خو کی برس ساکرتوشی یرودولی میس یرودولی سامارت لیو بازیسیزی کوتخت که به روسات خوب باشی آری سکوت اولیت از ترس بدال سوکر اولیت از پیروزی ساکرتو از ایرانی که اولیت از کنسرتیا دایدو یک چای دوست دارد پیروزات یک خت با چند تیر که به روسات خوب بیشتر ساکت چند دک اولیت از تورمیت از از لگورس توی ساکرتو لوورت با بودا بهش کنونسیاس از شم دگیاری اولیت از سامیت از شیوکه کانی سازگورا اید دایت از پیروزی کانون این اطلاعاتی اولیت خوب بیشتر ساکت ساده از کانی سازگورا کریتیکولی کریتیکولی سو سو اینفراستوری سو بیکت بی سو از خرمتی از ساکرتو هوشی از ساکرمتی با سطح بیاد زیر تعداد از از سرد گوفجیا که تیم ماتی تاتس واس از شم دگی کو اولیت از سامیت چی پیروزی کی برو سطح خوب استراتژی دایدو تا اوکی اولیت از چند متری است. یانوارش دایدو اوکی میوره استراتژی کی برو سطح خوبیش مرتوله بیت. ساموک من دو گرما. می شمیلی ات که که نوسیا مگه تر مگر از گارکولی آمیترو هم استراتژیا پرکو کن استراتژی آرگاچ نیب. پرو اروپا که کنن اسکار کوتله تر استراتژی آرگاچ نیب. ساکر دوم که میوره استراتژی دادو آمی مرتوله بیت. اصلا رو آگات سر آگات سر بسیت زینوارت. گارکولی خارو زبی آری سامی مرتوله بیت. ایت ایتا پیش گفتم تو رم آمی مرتوله بیت شیمش نیوا راگات آمی تاب راگات گارکولی استانگ استاگناتسیا گاچه ریبا گاچه ریبولیا راست تو کات شلیبا میگو کنم این کام درم تو کات آرگانی تردس است دارگی از نیشلوای این دارگی رودیسات پارلو تو تردس با الکترونی مرتوله بی سریس بی آوتسیلی بی لیو گانی تردس از کی بروسات خوبی است می مرتوله با استورت مونت سمت گاتسول ساعت نوسات داده سر می مرتوله باریس رودیسات یو می وی تردس با الکترونی مرتوله بی سریس بی پارلو لورا تو تردس با سه کی بروسات خوبی است می مرتوله با از اس اریس مکلت چه می اسکات پریزنتاسیا تو رایم شکیت خواهد کرد شه می لکه کی پاسخت تو رایم تو ورگی پاسخ داد اریس اس و این اطلاعاتیا فیس بوک زد سوار ولی گناه ولی اسکات شه می لات مم زنود پیرات شه می لات مم زنود رگورت رگورت تو این سوار می سعی بی آگه تابم خود مادر با باتو نلادو مال با کارگات کارگات. لایک سیچاس. سو ناو ویل هاف اوچا ساتوری. اوچا. هیز هیز آلسو رپ انسیسی فلو اند آلسو دی دایرکتور اف سمال اند میدیوم اپراتورس اینترنت اپراتورس اف جورجیا. آها. اوند. نین. So it works? Flash? No, no, not that one. Hmm. Ah, so, 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 so it works. Ετήλι. Καόρτζελε πες καρτούλατ. Είσαι ο Ζαλιάν Ταϊγαλετ. Αλβα το κουέ. Μαγνά μου δάχτυλο του χουτσούτσι αλβα τα χουτσούτσι σεβεστε πριν δάω μταρούτ. Τι είναι αυτό; Είναι ο Μετσέχεβα. Τι είναι πρεσεντάσια; Μετς αρμόβατγεν. Τέλεια κομπιλατόρε πες ασοτσιάτσιας. Αμαδρούλατ. Ωραία ισοκίς. Ակավորի բորդիս ձեվրից դա վար ռայպիս խելողուծ դա ձանախտիրով դակավ շեպուլի ամորգանիսացիաստան եմ իտորով 
IPCC-ს არ არის რაღაც განყენებული ცალკეულგომი ორგანიზაცია, ეს არის ორგანიზაცია, რომელიც შედგება იმ ადამიანებისგან, რომლებიც დაკავშირებული არიან ინტერნეტთან. და არის ამ საზოგადოების ამ ადამიანების ნაწილი, სწორედ ამიტომ არის ძალიან მნიშვნელობა თითოეული თქვენ განისვის, რომ ჩაერთოთ ამ პროცესებში. აა, მოდი დავიწყებ ახალ დროს ცოტა გვაქვს, გადავალ პირდაპირ ეს არის მონაცემები რომელიც ნიშნავს რომელიც წარმოადგენს რომ ამ ნაცალი ჩართული საქართველო გლობალურ განვითარების ინდექსია საქართველოსთვის მათ შორის აქ გამოტანილი მაქვს სხვადასხვა ქვეყნების შემთხვევა და სხვადასხვა დრაივერებია შეფასებისთვის წარმოადგენილი თუმცა ძალიან მნიშვნელოვანია ბოლო ქვედა დრაივერები თუ ხედავთ რა ამ ნაცალი ჩართული ლოკალური საზოგადოება ლოკალური სპეციალისტები ამ პროცესში რამდენად დიდი ამათ დასაქმება და ეს მაჩვენებლები 2020-ს ქვემოთ ამ მაჩვენებლები არის საკმაოდ ცუდი მაჩვენებლები მათ შორის საქართველოსთვის თუ შევადარეთ იგივე მაჩვენებლები იგივე ჩვენ მეზობელ სომხეთთან ერთად რა ხელაა სხვაობა იგივე შეგვიძლია ავიღოთ მაღალ ლაპარაკო გვაქვს უკვე ბალტიისპირეთზე იგივე ავიღოთ მოლდოვა ხო იგივე ავიღოთ უკრაინა ამ შემთხვევაში ჩვენ ხედავთ რომ ჩართულობა ანუ დასაქმება ამ ბაზარზე ლოკალური არამარტო მის გარეთაც საკმაოდ დაბალი ეს ყველაფერი ერთობლიობაში ითვლება და ეს ათმანად თქვენთვის აქტუალური და პრობლემურია. რაც შეეხება ჩართულობას, რაც შეეხება აა ინტერნეტ მართველობას და ინტერნეტ მართველობის ფორუმს. აა ეხლა აა დაახლოებით მე უკვე მეოთხე ფორუმი ჩატარდება წელს, ეს მითხო. აა ეს შეეხება ეროვნულ ფორუმს, წესები არის გამჭირვალი, ანუ რა არის ამ ყველაფრის შინაარს. შინაარსი არის ის რომ ლოკალური თემი აქარა ლაპარაკი პირველიჩი სახელმწიფოზე მართველობა არ გაიგოთ როგორც სახელმწიფო ორგანოების მიერ განხორციელებული ინტერნეტის მენეჯმენტი იმიტომ რომ ეს ეწინააღმდეგება ინტერნეტის შინაარს კი მე ვისი შეიძლება მე ამიტომ რა ჯერს ის რომ თემი მართავს ინტერნეტს ქვეყანაში თუმცა პროცესები რომელიც მიმდინარეობს ინტერნეტთან დაკავშირებით არის ღია ყველასთვის ჩვენ ჩემი ორგანიზაციაც და ვერ დავიკოხნით რომ ყველაფერს ცული და ყველაფერს ასე თქვათ ჩვენ ჭკუაზე ვაკეთებთ იმიტომ რომ ჩვენ მცირე ბიზნეს წარმოვადგენთ და აისოქში ცდილობთ რომ წავიყვანოთ რაღაც პროცესების ცოლი მიმართულებით მათ შორის იგივე აქ პერსონალ მონაცემები ახსენეთ ინტერნეტის შავი მხარე ვახსენეთ რა თქმა უნდა არის ეს პრობლემები ამას ვერსად ვერ გავექცევით ეს არის მოცემულობა თუმცა ეს არ ნიშნავს რომ ჩვენ ინტერნეტთან დაკავშირებით რაღაც ვის უნდა შეხვდეთ როგორც საფრთხეს იმიტომ რომ ეს არის ამ დროს ჩვენთვის შესაძლებლობა რომ ყველაფერი გამოვასწოროთ და ცოლი მიმართულებით წავიყვანოთ რაც შეეხება ისტორიას გასაგებია 2003 წელს დაიწყო 2005ში უკვე გაერო სპეციალურმა ფორუმმა ინტერნეტ საზოგადოების და ანუ საპროცესების დაწყება რომ ხუთი დაინტერესებული ჯგუფი როგორიც არის რა თქმა უნდა სახელმწიფო და სახელმწიფო სტრუქტურები შემდგომ ტექნიკური საზოგადოება აკადემიური სექტორი როგორც ამ პროცესების ერთ-ერთი მხარე და თქვენ წარმოადგენს სწორედ ამ აკადემიურ სექტორს რა თქმა უნდა ეს არის კერძო სექტორი ანუ კომპანიები და ბიზნესი რომელიც რა თქმა უნდა ჩართული ამ პროცესში და ამ პროცესში მონაწილეობს და არა სამთავრობო სექტორი როგორც რომელიც წარმოადგენს ასე თქვა მესამე მხარეს გაკოლი ვოჭდოგის პოზიციას ამ პროცესებში ისეთ საკითხებზე როგორიცაა მაგალითად ინფორმაციის თავისუფლება, ინფორმაციას და ხელმის ასტომობა, როგორც არის პერსონალ მონაცემების დაცვა და სხვადასხვა საკითხები, რომელიც ადამიანის უფლებების ადამიანის უფლებებს უკავშირდება ინტერნეტში ერთ-ერთი მთავარი საკითხი, ამ ერთ-ერთი არსებული ცხელი საკითხი, მაგალითად არის ამ ნათარი თქვენთვის ცნობილი არ ვიცი იგივე მავნე კონტენტის ხელმის ასტომობა ინტერნეტში, რომელზეც იყო გარკვეული ისეთი მცდელობები, რომ ამას ჩართული იყო ძალიან დიდწილად სახელმწიფო, თუმცა კარგია რომ გადაიფიქრეს და ცოტა სხვა რეჟიმში გადავიდა ეს ისევ თვითრეგულირების რეჟიმში. რაც შეეხება მოდელს, ანუ ყველა ეს მხარე ჩართული არის პროცესში, განსაზღვრავენ დღის წესს იქს და ხდება დისკუსია თემებზე, რომელიც აქტუალურია სხვადასხვა მხარისთვის, მე განახებთ უკვე თქვენ გვერდს, დღის წესს იგი დგება არა სახელმწიფოს მიერ, ამას ადგენს თუ საზოგადოება და ხდება ამასთან დაკავშირება ჩართვა, მონაწილეობა და ასე თქვათ ის წესს რიგი შედგენა და რას თავარი ანგარიშის გაკეთება ანგარიშის გაკეთება რატომ არის მნიშვნელოვანი ამაში განისაზღვრება თუ რა ჩათვალა ადგილობრივმა თემა მნიშვნელოვნად კონკრეტულ წელს და როგორ იყო მათი რეკომენდაციები მათი ხედვები კონკრეტულ საკითხებთა მიმართებაში იმიტომ რომ ამ ფორუმზე თანაბარ სიფრთხეზე ზის სახელმწიფოც კერძო სექტორი წარა სამთავრობო სექტორი და ყველასხვა დაინტერესებული მხარე რა თქმა უნდა აკადემიაც თუმცა მიდაგითხათ რომ ტექნიკური სექტორი ძალიან პასიურია და აკადემიური სექტორიც 
Սետքոտ ասի ուրոս։ Եխլար կարգի ամբեպի անու խուտի էկս իվնիս, հակարդուլոս չատարդեպ էյրոպոլի փորով նոմեց աչատարեպ ու էյրոպիս գարետ առաստրոս, թպիլի շիկնեպա այս շեխվետրա, մեմ ակս պայեր է միրած տամխջասապտուխար Հարդամջերի արիս ռայպեսիս եմ շեխվետիս էրտերտի, իսև էրոգոր ծխա այի խուտիս ձևրեպի գիվի այկանի ախսեն էտիս եվ ախսեն այի սոքի ռոմելից արիս ինտերնետ սազուգադոյ բատա, ինտերնետիս մամբեպիս մի եշեխնիլի գայերթի փորումիա, դա ես փորումի չատար դեպա, թվիրիշ կիտեղ ոտխոք ամնը որդեպի, կարթոլի փորումի չատար դեպա, ոտխշի, ոտխ իվնիս, դա դա այդվով որշոտ կարթոլ պրոցեսև, թունց ամադրով չատար դեպա, տրեինինգ էբի, անողիայիք Սա տկենի ինտերես, թու գայ ինտերես է, թե սպերո, դա տկեն թույս միշտովովանի դրախա նախար թավոս միշտովովանի է, ուպրում է տա տակտիրով է չայերտոտ, ինվելոշի պեպ ժոմելից ագոստիկյու է ռայպենսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիսիս
საქართველოს საკმოდ კაი მდგომარეობა აქვს ამ მართულებით და ამ ნაწილში ჩვენ ჩართული ვართ და მუშაობთ თუმცა დრაივერები რომელთაც ხდება შეფასება რამდენად თავისუფალია ინტერნეტი ქვეყანაში არის საკმაოდ ისეთი ანუ როგორ გითხათ შეიძლება კარგი იყოს იგივე აზერბაიჯანისთვის სწორად გამიგეთ იმიტომ რომ იქ ხდება იგივე აი ბლოგერები ჟურნალისტები შევიწროვება ონლაინ აქტივისტები შევიწროვება კლელობა ახლა ამ დრაივერი თუ შეფასებთ საქართველოს შეიძლება ნუ მივიღოთ კაი ისე ვთქვათ კაი ადგილი შეფასების კრიტერიუმებში თუმცა ძალიან ბევრი დეტალია ძალიან ბევრი პრობლემა რომელიც იგივე რაიპენსისის პრეზენტაციაში იყო წარმოდგენილი და ამაზე ვახანმა და ჩვენ მას ტომარმა ისაუბრა კერძოდ საუბარია ტრაფიკის მოძრაობაზე რომელიც ნიშნავს რომ ქართული მონაცემები ქართული ინფორმაცია თქვენი პაკეტები მოგზაურობს ევროპაში თუმცა მოგზაურობს რუსეთში მათ შორის არ ლაპარაკი იგივე დნს უსაფრთხოებაზე ძალიან ბევრი დეტალია რომელიც არის მატრიცის უკან დამალული საქსელო უსაფრთხოება კიბერ უსაფრთხოება ეს ყველაფერი რა თქმა უნდა ამის უკან არის დამალული ეს პრობლემაა შესაბამისად ყველაფერს ამას ჭირდება თვით ძალიან აქტიური ჩართულობა ძალიან აქტიური რეგულირება მაგრამ რატო არის პრობლემური ეს ბიზნეს როგორც ბიზნეს მოდელი ქვეყნისთვის ატომა არის პრობლემა ეს პირდაპირ უკავშირდება ფასს რომელსაც ჩვენ ვიხდით ინტერნეტში იმიტომ რომ ეს თავისთავად ხარჯებს დის და ეს ჩამოდის ჩვენ სააბონენტო გადასახადში ამიტომ არის ეს პრობლემა და მნიშვნელოვნად მაგალითად თქვენთვის როგორც მომხმარებლებისთვის კეთილი და დავასლოთ უკვე თვით რეგულირება თუ რეგულირება როგორ ფიქრობთ რა არის გზა იმისთვის რომ მაგალითად ცივეწყოვან მათ დამან ძმა ამან ჩვენმა შვილმა ამ ვიღაცამ რომ ეს ინტერნეტის ბუთ ჩვენ ვიხდით არა თვითოს ვიდეო მუქარის მიმართვით რომ ეს დანაშაული და არ მოუწოდო სიტყვას საქართველოს მოსახლეობას ხალხო იარაღი აიღეთ და რაღაც რელიგიური ან რაღაცა ნიშნით სხვა ადამიანებს თავს დაესხით ვინუნე იყოს ამაზე პასუხისგებელი როგორ გონიათ აბძანეთ არა სპამი არ არის ამ ლაპარაკი არის კონტენტზე რომელიც ჩერდება ინტერნეტის მეშვეობით აა და სპამ ხო გასაგებე მეილი პირადი ფოსტა გასაგებია მაგრამ ლაპარაკი არის უ ცოტა უფრო სხვა რაღაცას როგორ ფიქრობთ თქვენ ვინ უნდა გააკონტროლოს როგორ ვიყენებთ ჩვენ სივრცეში ინტერნეტს თქვენ თვითონ თქვენ და თქვენ რომ მოდიან სტუმრები და და ვშთ აზგეთ ვაიფაი პაროლს აშთხო შეაკონტროლოთ ისინი აი ინფორმაციას ვირთავენ შვილები შემთხვევაში ეხა YouTubeზე გამოდის და ამ ბევრი პორნო საიტი რომელიც სიტყვაზე 10 წლამდე ბავშვისთვის არის მავნებელი თქვა ზოგადად პორნოგრაფია არ არის აკრძალული ანუ ვინ უნდა გააკონტროლოს სახელმწიფო თუ ჩვენი შობლებმა რაღაც კი კიდე სხვა იდეა ხო არ გაქვთ ინტერნეტს ყველაზე დარა აკმაყოფილება რომ ჩაივე აი კი 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 დისკუსია არ არა თქვენი აზრი მაინტერესო თუ გრავოთ ეს თემა არის არსევე აქტუალური კეთილი კეთილი სხოფელი რომელიც ზრუნავს ჩვენზე რო ჩვენ და ჩვენ მაშინვე არ ნახავ მაგას მავლი კონტენტი ამაზე არავინ არ ნაიზრუნოს არ ჩვენი და ჩვენი საქმე ასე თქვათ კაი დავასრულებთ ეხა ვიცო ძალიან დაიხარეთ სახებზე გატყობთ ამას ძალიან დიდი მალობა ყურადღებისთვის და მოსვლისთვის და დასტრებისთვის აა ჩემი საკონტაქტო მონაცემები ისეთში აუთ შეიძლება ყოველგან ნახოთ სახე და გვარს ხედავთ დემო ფეიზუს ან ნებისმიერი ფორმით მე ვარ ადგილობრივი ინტერნეტ მართლობის ფორუმის კოორდინატორი ანუ თუ გაქვთ ინტერესი ჩართვა დაკავშირების ინფორმაციის მიღების გაზიარების დიდი სიამოვნებით მოგეხმარებით და ღია ვარ ამისთვის ნებისმიერი ფორმით ასე რომ არ მოგეგდოთ მოგმართეთ და უფრო აქტიურად ჩაერთეთ ამ პროცესში მალობა And now Roman Karchava, he, ha he will share with us some local experience about uh, usage of uh, RAP Atlas props. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. He is not yet our fellow, but he has a good potential. Sergey, me tsarmovat geni regionalur providers sakartveloshi, samegreloshi, orduneti, chven vart asotsirebuli tsevri raipis, liri da shesabamisat gagvachnia chveni sakutari AES nomeri, gagvachnia chveni IP kseli, anu zalian patara da minimaluri slash tvart tsarmovdenelebi raipshi, magram uke imis gamoro 
IP address be damned out of the tree. That's a sabam is a do proti sales and set and swear it's lever IP. Unda da ujerdet minimalus ratsari. Chemi presentatia echeba, ripe net is ertet mozobilobas, ripe atlas, romelits, gamuik eneba, axel sheet, rubber shooting is a twist, image twist row. Minimum, minimum. Cuma yang kau kata tu, cuma nik selis analisi. Da, awal anu mungkin mara bels romelit arcevan istina shea. Atu romel kompani asta mimides. Da shesa bamisat air cios is chartuit sertili romel shit chair tos rai patlas is asholebit. Shesa zlebelia nakhot lebis ganu ubashi tu am kompani asam deni konda abtai mi ram deni ko chaward na. Ram dengan ini kos itu aje paket losi kar kauul IP address ram de rai patlas ya ketep sah sebe ori hopis semut sembah cuan ziri tadik seli semdek tak pola seli semut semulia mau slide depan kita kau yarut rokos mungkin kita tu aje esegi esari rai p rai patlasi mesam versiya ام آپاراتی است کنفیگوری ره با سوگا داد آخته با ای تیوایسی ورته با پیدا پیکسلز روملشیت آوتسی لب لادون دایی کس دیتیپی پیروال پیروال چارت وازه شم دگ مود خونی سپود زوده تو میوت رایب شهزاد لبلیا کایخس ناس تیوایس میوت خمود سپورتی رات او نخود هدگیل سه آر سبولی مونات سمی بی روملیت رپورتیس دونزه ای نخه باشی نم پیروزی راست خواهد بود. از میشنوانی رای پیاکت هفت پینگاوس. از همه تیم روت تنس روملیت چون توی سنوبیل روگرد روت تنس بی روگرد سنوبیل روت تنس بی دا. از سه میور زیری تادی پункتیا را تام دوایس گاچ نیا روگرد کی خرید تریس روت ساکت هفت کنکرت اول هپام ده تو تا و کنفیگوری رفت زودا داد روملی هوبی گویند. آرایش چه زودولی کنکرتولی ایم اور هوبز روملیت دیفولت داری مطمئن. رایب اتلاسیس میبما اکسلشی امیش توی آرایی اوتسیله بله یک رایب رایپیس اسوسیه بولیت اوری آن لیری ساکماریسیا رجیستراسیا کایارو کندس از دوایسی روملی سابسولیت رو ادو پاسوا. دا امیستویس ساختی رو منات سه میبیار روملی سه سه خشون خدا و تیساری پروبیس ایدی روملی تویتون بوارت سوکانم خارجی آتیریم مک میسامارتی دیسکریپشنی دا اوتی تبت ارتیوس تو ساداری سه کنکرت ولی دوایسی بازیره بولی دا امیش شم دک آتلازه گاموچ دبا تقوینی منات سه میبی تقوینی داد آت سنتریس منات سه میبی تو رام رام دن اخنیس اب تای میگاد رام دن ند اوت خوته ای کسلی تا آسش شم دک پیروزی میدا ما است ندا کاوش ره بی ساو برو تو رات واریم نیش نلوانی رایب اتلاسی کندس خویلا سرویس پروایدرز آن داد آت سنترس چون توی نیش نلوانیا چونی منات سه میبی ای خود از دومادی آن چون کندس اینترنت آن شهر تبا مکسیمال ورد تقویت از گارشه. آمیستویس خویل از ساندوت کارو آریس ایس دوایسی رادگان ایس آرخ تبا کنکرتولی پروایدریس میر آم رپورت بیزگا که تبا آم ساکه تبس تویتون رایپی چونی ساسرور دان گاسولی منات سه بیس خرده. از دوایی سه بی کنفیگوراسیی میره ساده است ارثی ساده از گان ماو باشی ارثی ساده از گان ماو باشی اخته بام فیلم واری از گان خلی با تا ارثی ساده از گان ماو باشی تو دو مادیاریان کسلشی. ام دوایی سه بس رگورس خدا و تیک موتس مولی تو را پروتکولی تاری میرت بولی میره آری خدوادی تو آرا تا شصت لبیلیا ام منات سه میز بلوکی ره با کنکرتولی کنکرتولی میسیم پلوبیلیس میر تو میو تولی روم